things of the Lord are battles that the Lord is fighting and involves you in that battle. But when you go to fight battles that are not of the Lord, you'll be in trouble because you are alone struggling there. Not that those in the place where that Mzea was saying, is those, as though, that those devils are very tough. No. <laughs> you see the way God works, he can tell you don't touch anything here. Just move. I believe God could have killed Herod. <laughs> But he tells, he sends an angel, tell Joseph to take Mary and the child and run. <laughs> and I wonder, why should such a big God <laughs> tell Mary and Joseph to take a child? And he could have simply have killed Herod and everything will be over. But God is God. He works in mysterious ways. So we need the leading of the Holy Spirit in all that we do so that even when you hear God well, I usually read, I'm a reader and I like reading books. I listen to many testimonies. But I know what those people did to have a breakthrough. They were led by the Lord. So I don't copy them. I want to find out, and myself, in this situation, I am in, what are you saying to me, Lord? How am I to handle it? Because most of us, you may hear somebody fasted for 21 days, this something. That was that person's direction. Sometimes the Lord will just tell you, thank me. And what he instructed another person to do for, to fast 21 days, he just tells you, thank me, and he does the same thing for you. Mm. So we don't go imitating or copying things. We are led by the Holy Spirit. And that's why Jesus speaking to the churches. He says, he who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the churches. Just lift your hand and pray. Say, thank you, Lord Jesus. When you spoke to the seven churches, you said, let him that has an ear hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. I pray in this conference that, Heavenly Father, you grant me an ear to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. So that's my prayer. Let's go to Genesis 28. You want to begin, so the conference... Sunday will be a normal Sunday. We want, I want to build up something as we head there, but we want to begin with this place. Praise God. So that we move to, to higher levels in the mighty name of Jesus. And I want to read Genesis. You know that scripture, you know, when Jacob was running away after he had with Ujanja, he took the inheritance of his first brother. And so as he was running, it was a long journey, and here he decided, he, when it got dark, he decided to rest in a place. And I want us to go there, we'll script some Genesis 28, are you there? I want us to check that scripture. Verse 10, the Bible says, Jacob left Beersheba and set out for Haran. When he reached a certain place, he stopped for the night because the sun had set. Taking one of the stones there, he put it under his head and lay down to sleep. So that's a, it was a physical journey. It was a physical place. He rested as he was heading to where he was heading to. And we are told that, verse 12, he had a dream in which he saw a stairway resting on the earth with his top reaching to heaven. And the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Then above it stood the Lord. And he said, I am the Lord, the God of your father Abraham, and the God of Isaac. I'll give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying. Praise God. Amen. So here he sleeps in a place, and that place was called Ruth. He sleeps there. And when he sleeps there, it's another place because it is not, he, he sleeps just somewhere in a bush because you are not told he found a house. It seems he was not welcomed by anybody or decided because I don't know this place, I don't know this place, let me just find a place to rest. And he took a stone as a pillow and he rested in some place and he had a dream. And when he woke up, let's go to verse 16. When Jacob woke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware. Praise God. And then he continues to say something very important. Surely the Lord, he says, he, has, he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Amen. That is the first place in the Bible the word gate is mentioned. Praise God. Amen. That is the first place in the Bible the word gate. And I saw we are dealing with the scripture of turning the battle at the gates. 
Praise God. And I want to thank God that when I heard what this building is called, it's called All Gate. Hmm? Do you know the name of this building? So you need to understand because you've come to an altar. You have come to a shrine. You have come to a gate. Because shrines and altars are gates. Hmm? And I thank God brought you these people. He can trust you to handle what needs to be handled here. Greet somebody next to you to tell them, welcome to all gate. <laughs> you don't know even the name of the building. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm not baptizing, just go and find what it is called. Even you go to the Google, just Google the all gate <laughs> building. Mm. Praise God. And I thank God for the sensitivity of the servants of God. Sometimes every time I was sharing with the servant of God and telling him, it seems God uses you people to be patient. The other time we had meetings coming. Now we have been in meeting coming. And here is a conference. If you look at all the conferences you've had, there are always national meetings that are coming that every time God does something, that we have a conference that becomes like as a pacetter for the what God is going to do. Amen. Thank God for what he's going to do through his servant Benihin in this land, and we welcome him. Praise God. Uh, so some people sometimes hold meetings for us with a particular motives, but in this conference, we are going to welcome that servant of God. Amen. We are going to welcome that God. He might not be here physically, but we know God is going to visit our nation through the servant of God, and we are going to deal with gates and open them. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Because sometimes the gates of this nation, are, like in Jericho, we find that the gates can be of a place can be tightly shut because of the people of God. That's why sometimes you find in a city, the people of God are struggling. Because like the city of Jericho, the gates are tightly closed for them. So other people, because gates are points of entrance and access. So you end up finding, you wonder why. Why the church, the believers are struggling. Because for you to be able to have breakthroughs, sometimes you find the enemy is very tricky. Cities like Jericho, they are closely, closely tight, the gates, so that believers can have no entrance and access. You are just there physically struggling <laughs> because you are talking of spiritual gates. So you wonder what, why are those people having access to finances, succeeding, get things? Because in the spirit, the gates are open to them, but to you, they are tightly shut. <laughs> Praise God. Salimia Ria Karibu Naimambi Abari Akufungiwa Milango and Arobi Vikali. In the spirit. Till you sit down sometimes. You are in the same city. You as a Christian na same akuna pesa. Akuna kazi. Na kazi za wengine zinaendelea. Nekufungiwa milango ya muji. They are closed tightly. And when the Israelites were going to get to Jericho, the enemy made sure that the people of that city crossed the gate tightly that those people cannot get. So the city gates can be closed tightly because by the kingdom of darkness, because of the children of God, that we may not have access, that we may not have entrance into what God wants us to do in a city. But in this meeting, you'll marvel, praise God. Because whatever is going to happen, I want to assure you begin from this ministry because this meeting we are seeing is a global meeting. Mm. So many things are going to happen in this ministry and in, in the body of Christ in this nation. And I thank God that I'm here. I'm here because there are things I could not access because particular gates were closed. But when those gates are open, they are for our individual lives, even for ministry, for business, things will open up Amen. and you'll marvel. Amen. Praise God. So you'll be shocked as soon as possible after you finish these meetings. You are going to find that a lot of people, even from beyond this nation, will start coming to this place. Amen. Praise God. You have people from German, from all places. People will come to this place. So I'm just telling you so that you may be encouraged to do what you are doing. 
Because sometimes the Lord usually takes us ahead to tell us, he tells us, this is where I'm taking you, a place of milk and honey. But before you get to the milk and honey, there's a journey to go. <laughs> Praise God. So I want to tell you that God will move you to another level. Amen. Individually and corporate in every area of our lives. And I'm encouraged to be here because I'm not only here to minister, but to be ministered. So as God ushers us individually in the church and the nation into where he wants us to enter, I thank God that I'm part in this meeting. Praise God. So we see Jacob is in a place because I'm giving this scripture to help us where you are in. So that when we handle what you are going to handle, you are going to understand. So here Joseph goes to a city, to a place. It is called Luz. And in this place that he goes, it is very interesting that he realizes he had no place. He sleeps in a bush there, takes that stone as a pillar, and he sleeps. But when he sleeps, the Lord visits him and gives him a revelation of the place. Praise God. You need to have a revelation of places. Praise God. So a revelation of the place. So when he slept there, go through a dream. He spoke to Jacob through a dream and gave him a revelation of where he was. And he was shocked when he woke up from the dream. And the Bible said when Jacob woke from his sleep, he thought, surely the Lord is in this place. And I was not aware. Praise God. The Bible continues to say, he was afraid and said, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God. This is the gate of heaven. Can you imagine in a place, no house, a bush, eh? and the Lord appears you, and you look at the place, and you get shocked. God reveals you concerning a place, and you get shocked. I thought this place was a bush. These are just trees. But it is the house of God. It is a gate of heaven. And actually God is there. Praise God. When he had that, the Bible says, early the next morning, Jacob took stone he had placed under his head and set it up as a pillar and poured oil on it. Praise God. I believe the servants of God, God permitting, will anoint the place. Praise God. We need to understand these principles. When he arrives, he called the place Bethel, though the city used to be called Luz. Praise God. So there's a place where you change the spiritual structure or architecture of a place. You change it. Praise God. It becomes, you have a revelation in the spirit, what this place is, then change it. Praise God. Because if you don't understand the spiritual architecture of places, you'll be in trouble. Most of you have had experiences in life where when you lived in a particular place, you had so much success and breakthrough. You move to another place, you struggle. Even you wish you are back where you came from. Praise God. And sometimes it was the Lord's will he gave you. You went to a territory probably which has been worked on. So you didn't struggle. Some people had paid their price to work on that territory. Deal with its spiritual architecture eh? and structures and mold it according to the kingdom of God. So something is going to happen in this meeting because we are going to deal with spiritual architecture. And structures will change. Hmm. Because this is the biggest challenge we have in this nation. Hmm. Like the challenge, the government that is in place. The biggest problem is not with the government, it's the structures. Hmm. It's like we are trying to put, to put new wine in an old wine skin. When Jesus was talking about, he was dealing with structures. And that is the biggest problem we have in this nation. So we have people who are used to old wine mm? Mm? because the attitude of Kenya is like an old wine skin and somebody is trying to put a new wine and it can't work. <laughs> Praise God. So the problem that we have in this nation are structures. Praise God. And the way the structures were put in this place, and I'm talking about spiritual structures that we are going to work on in this nation. When we work on I want you to understand you are going to see things change. Amen. Praise God. Amen. People cannot understand what the government is doing. And the problem, I can assure you, is not the government. The problem is the structures. 
and you are trying to put new wine in an old wine skin. When we deal with the with wine skin, we are dealing with structures. And we are going to work on those things. Praise God. Amen. Because with what the Lord, because a lot of people are saying a lot of things and a lot of things, and I can tell people their problem is the structures in this nation, and we are going to work on them as the Lord will permit us in this conference. And we start in this place, and the Lord has a reason to bring you into this place. So, I want us to understand the structure of this place you are in. The building is called All Gate. All Gate. Uh, because I usually ask you, <laughs> the Lord spoke to us about God moving you to a place. He has moved you. You have come from a particular place and the Lord has brought you. The movement was not only physical but spiritual. Amen. I want to tell you, physically you are not where you are. Amen. And also spiritually you are not where you are. <laughs> You're in a new place. So don't try to stay here the way you are there. Praise God. Amen. Mm -hmm. So changes are very important. And I thank God that you don't need a gym here. Yeah. Here you don't need a gym. Coming up is, is, is a gym enough. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Most of you, you will lose weight. Don't complain. I think the Lord watched even you physically and realized these people need a gym. <laughs> they need a gym. And I'm sure when you move up here and down, you'll be a very healthy man and a very healthy woman. Amen. Praise God. You'll be very healthy people because it's also a gym. So I want us to get into the word of God. As I was praying for this place, as I was praying for place, when I was led to know, and I knew this meeting was very strategic. One thing according to the scripture that is leading this conference is a very important scripture. Because the schemings that have been planned against this nation are very evil. Yale mambo yamepangiwa taifa hili kwa sababu ya kusudi la mungu. Na hasa kanisa la mungu. They are bad things. Praise God. And I thank God that this meeting is timely for us to take action and things to turn around. Praise God. The other day after dealing with particular things, I saw some particular people, priests of a particular mountain, gathering and speaking against the government. But I was just laughing because the Lord had already dealt, led me to deal with what they were doing. So I knew how they were making noise, and even the threats they were offering would not work. Yeah. It was just hot air because I know the force behind what they were doing is already neutralized in the spirit. So they are just making noise. They'll make a noise which will amount to nothing. So I want to tell you, just as it was in the book of Esther, Kenya is in a very critical place as a nation and also the church. And the schemings of the enemy have been very heavy from within and from without. Within the nation and from without. But I can assure you, as we are true and faithful to God, one thing I can assure you is that, is that the enemy will not succeed. Amen. And as we have been directed in this meeting, let's read that scripture of Esther as I combine with that. That's why the Lord has brought you to this place and given you a very important theme. So it is not about, you know, many times when you have such a meeting, we are so focused on our needs and the challenges we are going through. But I want to tell you that, yes, the Lord will deal with you individually, but this thing is big. Praise God. It's something national. It's something international. And I want to read that scripture that you've been given of Esther, the book of Esther. And the Bible says, verse 1, 9, verse 1, on the 13th day of the 12th month, the month of Adar, the edict commanded by the king was to be carried out. On this day, the enemies of the Jews had hoped to overpower them, but now the tables were turned and the Jews got up the upper hand over those who hated them. Because I want to tell you the conspiracies against this, the church and this nation are at high gear. And the enemies are so confident they are about to succeed. 
But I thank God that we have a prophetic voice. Amen. And we have a, the word of God. Amen. They think they have the upper hand. Vile vitu wamekoroka na wamepika. Hawa nasema asasa tulale tu. Tulale tu sasa hakuna kungengana ikitu tumetokesea. But they don't know about our God. Amen. This nation belongs to God. Amen. This nation is an inheritance of the righteous. Amen. And one God says in Psalms 125 verse 3 that the scepter of the wicked shall not remain Hmm? shall not remain on the land allotted to the righteous. Amen. So the wicked have been scheming so many things, scheming and scheming, and they were coming to a place where they are about to say to make pattern. But it is too late. Hmm? They have schemed and planned from within and without this nation. But one I can assure you according to this word in this conference is that our God is faithful. Our God is faithful. Kenya belongs to God. Yeah. It's the inheritance of the righteous. Yeah. The wicked may scheme and have schemed whatever they have schemed. But I can assure with this confidence that they are those they would overpower us. They were not amused with what happened in 2022. They were not amused because the church really sought the Lord. And whatever the enemy had schemed about, this nation was frustrated. The saddest thing that happened was that after we, when we entered in 2023, and that is the saddest part with the Church of Kenya, we usually pray for problems, uh, not even for purposes. Uh, we need to understand that God has a plan and a purpose for this nation. So even when we pray for an election is over, if we have not reached the purpose, we keep praying. But most of us, many people are praying because of fear what happens during elections. So when there was no problems, people slept. And in 2023, the enemy actually made a succeed in gaining an upper hand in this nation. And you could feel there's very little prayer going on. You could feel 2023, something is missing in the realm of the spirit. The church is not praying. And so there are a lot of things that the enemy was doing to reposition himself, to restructure himself. To regain this nation from the, what they lost in 2022. And my prayer today is that I like what the servant of God, Apostle Murinda, when God sent him to this nation, and he was very, he encouraged Kenyans, although we Kenyans are very interesting people. And he made a statement that have helped me so much that when we pray for, for problems and needs, the problems are over and the needs are met. Our focus should be the purpose. Because you pray for lack of finances, finances will come. You pray for particular problems, they'll be over. But we are dealing with the destiny of this nation. So when we pray and the problem is over and a need is met, let's keep praying until we find that we have reached God's purpose for this nation. But for us, we pray, accident is imenda chini tunalala ten. Our focus should be God's purpose for our nation. Even in your life. Ukipata nguo ujafika. Praise God. Salimia mwenzako. Ukipata nguo mpia ni kama umefika binguni. Ukikula ushibe unafikiria umefika. Those are just normal things of life. God has a plan and a purpose for your life. And many of us, when we get most of these material things, we think we have arrived. And God has a plan and a purpose. Just ask your neighbor, what's God's plan and purpose for your life? Mana wengine wako kijenga kwako ni kama umefika binguni. Sasa hakuna shukuri ingine. Friji kijaa nyama na chakula huombi tena. Is that, is that as if kwamba you, you live to it. So when there is food, and that's the biggest problem. Most of us, our level of prayer, we are dealing with needs and problems. When the need is met and the problem is solved, why pray more? <laughs> and that is the saddest thing. Hmm? Because prayer, we need to understand that prayer and intercession is communion with God. And our communion with God needs to be continuous. 
But the biggest problem for us, prayer and intercession, is to solve a particular problem and to meet particular needs. When those problems are solved, the needs are met to Mefika at Wombitena. Mpaka, there is another need and another problem. And it is very sad. And I realize what happened to the church in 2023. We slept after praying to Kajipea holiday amao. <laughs> People relaxed in Kenya. And the enemy was able to regain particular grounds. And if you people, there's ritual prayer that is going on. And those who are praying, because they are not so many, the enemy is able to attack them because he has a few people troubling him and the rest are asleep. Then he can hit others. Praise God. So those who are really interceding really had battles in 2023. And I want to believe as this conference, as it is called, it is an awakening. I pray that we be awakened again to prayer intercession and change the focus of our prayer and intercession that it should be about destiny. It should be about purpose. Not just meeting needs. Not just solving problems. Needs and problems will be over. Praise God. But so far as we have not reached the purpose and the destiny God has for us individually, then we need to keep seeking God. We need to keep praying and interceding. Praise God. Just lift your hands and say, Heavenly Father, forgive me and forgive us as your church for not understanding your purpose for intercession. We have just thought intercession and prayer is for solving problems, is for meeting our needs. And when our needs are met and our problems are solved, we forsake prayer and intercession. Forgive us, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. You called us to always pray and to always intercede. Help us from this time as you awaken us in this conference even in prayer and intercession, that we shall start to pray without ceasing in the mighty name of Jesus until the second coming of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus. Say today, in the name of Jesus, we take the authority that the Lord Jesus, you delegated to us, and we exercise that authority today against the powers of darkness that have oppressed us in the prayer of pray, in the place of prayer and intercession, we break every sorcery, we break every witchcraft, we break every curse, every spell that the enemy did to us in the place of prayer and intercession that we got weakened. We break in the mighty name of Jesus, and we command every demonic spirit that was assigned. To fight us in the place of prayer. To be broken and to be cast out in the mighty name of Jesus. Every demonic spirit of spiritual blindness and deafness and heaviness and weakness. Depart from our lives. Depart from our place of prayer. Be gone in the name of Jesus. Precious Holy Spirit, our help in our weaknesses. We welcome you. For the word says we do not know how to pray as we ought to. But your Holy Spirit, you do help us in our weaknesses. We welcome you. Help us in the place of prayer. Help us in prayer intercession that you may pray and intercede as we ought to in this season that you are entering into to the glory of your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. It is done. In Jesus' name. Because the place of prayer, there have been so much battle. And every time you go to the place of prayer, there is warfare. You know when Paul and Cyrus, when they were going to the place of prayer, when they visited the place of the Salonica, and they were there, and they went to Lydia's place, and they were going to look for a place to pray. And the devil, the principality in the territory realized there are some guys who are coming to do something I don't like in this territory. He decided to send that girl who had a divination spirit. But the Bible says very well, we were going to the place of prayer. Praise God. They said they were going to the place of prayer. And the enemy decided, no way. 
let me go and confront these guys. And you use that guy to confront them. And the, the, the spirit in God actually troubled these people for a long time. They were supposed to go for prayer. And I want to pray today that you need to understand there's a scripture that I love. Let's read that act that you may put in your heart. It's a very important place. The place of prayer, there's always warfare. In Acts 16, because the place of prayer in this nation, the enemy was not amused when the church went to, to its place of prayer and intercession and decided in 2023, they'll see fire. And many people have gone through so many challenges. Many people even have given up in prayer or weakened in prayer. But my prayer that this conference, you'll be awakened. Amen. The Bible says in Acts 16, verse 16, once when you are going to the place of prayer, we were met by a slave girl who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God who are telling you the way to be saved. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit, not to the girl, because the devil was using this girl to come in you. These people, places are going to their place of prayer. And the enemy decides, no way. These people are not going to go. So this, this spirit in this girl troubled Paul and her, his companions for many days. Because she kept on this for many days. Can you imagine you are going to a place of prayer? Then trouble arises. You can't there. There is a spirit troubling you. And Paul gets furious and says, turn around and say to the spirit, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you to come out of her. And at that moment, the spirit left. So what spirit has been troubling you in the place of prayer? What challenges have you been experiencing in your place of prayer and intercession that you are not able to pray effectively? Can you assess yourself? Are you actually praying as you used to pray? Sani mari mukaribu na nisaidie kumuhubiria. As umekuwa ukiomba vile ulikuwa ukimeomba umeenda juu au umeteremka. Mwambie tusidanganyane tumeokoka, tuongee ukweli. Actually, are you praying and interceding as you used to? So ask yourself you need to and what is the problem? Ask your friend, what is the problem? Why do you think you are not praying as you ought to? How are you? Kuja unisalimie, unisaidie kuhubiri kidogo. We unaonekana, we unashida ya maombi. We uko fire. Hata uliomba zaidi. Bwana sifiwe. Nikuulize sasa. Unaweza kusema unaomba zaidi ya vile ulikuwa unaomba mbeleni au unajisikia uko chini. Sasa hebu tuelemeshe kidogo ume unajua kile kitu unajua Mungu hawezi kutuzuia kuomba. Sure. <laughs> Maana ni amri yake tuombe. Kwa hivyo anaye tuzuia ni sheta. Kulingana na wewe tufundishe na wewe ni mbinu gani wewe umeona shetani akitumia kukuzima katika maombi? Yeah. Mm. Ika affect moyo wako. Mm. 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 We are not finding fresh and blood. We are fighting principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. You need to know they don't want you to pray. <laughs> so you need to understand. And that's why the Bible says, Mama, Apo, too, I love this scripture. Hmm? Paulo akambia wa Korintho vizuri. Shetani asije akapata kutushinda. Mana hapo ni ukweli. Unajua if we are, we are more than conquerors. Eh? Since ni washindi na zaidi na atupasu kushindwa. Lakini ukweli mara nyingi tunakuta tukishindwa. Si kwa sababu sisi si zaidi ya washindi. Uh -uh. Lakini ni kanuni hii bibiria nasema. 2 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 11. 
What does the Bible say? The Bible says something that is mentioned there. In order that Satan might not outwit us, but we are not, but for we are not unaware of his schemes. So we need to understand the strategies. At a certain asije akapata kutushinda, mana atukosi kujua mbinu zake. Schemes ni mbinu. Kama sasa unu nile mbinu wadu ya natumia. Kwa piga katika maombi. Discord. Discord kwa hata ni kwa wajibu. Gossip. Mchungaji kwanza. Kwanza zindi utumetanguliwa sana. Wanasema hawi wanaendelea na maombi ya nasumbua maprogram. Kwa. So you'll notice the enemy does not want us to pray. So it's not easy to fight your fellow pastors. Eh? And blame they don't want to quiz what to attack kuomba. Shetani pale anapiga makofi. Maana you are fighting flesh and blood and not fighting him. So you need to get into prayer. <laughs> and pray and tell the devil you need to stop. Because we have the authority. So any ma you need to understand here is a spirit. Satan has, is using the spirit of discord and gossip. Strife and conflict. You need to understand behind every evil move, there is a spirit. So address that spirit. You spirit of gossip. You spirit causing discord. Bind that spirit. Take that authority. And pray for the grace of prayer and intercession in that group. So to begin that way to Because the place of prayer has not been easy. I don't know which strategy the enemy has used to attack you, so to neutralize you in the prayer of intercession. Probably health-wise. You have been attacked health-wise. Others have been attacked in their marriage, marital-wise. So, because Satan knows when your heart is in a particular state, because prayer has to do with the heart, when your heart is affected, you cannot pray effectively. Praise God. And I pray today that you be able, because the Bible says we are more than conquerors. We are not to be conquered. But sometimes the conquerors get conquered. Praise God. It's sad that conquerors sometimes get conquered. <laughs> conquerors get co conquered. And that's why Paul was advising the church. That shetani asije akapata kutushi, mana tukosi kujua mbinu zake. Kwa hivyo ni vizuri upate kuangalia katika maisha yako, ni mbinu gani ambao adui ametumia kunizima katika maombi na maombeshi. Is it marital crisis? Hmm? Katika ndoa, au ni kisirani ya vijana na watoto wako? Or is it financial crisis? Praise God. So you need to understand because behind the scenes of this crisis is Satan as in his demons. Who are manipulating you. They know if we do this, we shall neutralize this person. They will not be able to pray. Praise God. And here we find Paul realize we are supposed to be praying. <laughs> and here is a spirit troubling us using a particular individual. Because Satan or even individuals or situations, he can manipulate. If you read the Bible, you find many times Satan manipulating like the ocean, the sea, to drown the disciples, and Jesus will take charge. Praise God. So, you need to understand when Satan is manipulating situations and circumstances and using people, and that you are able to take authority. You are able to take authority. I'll never forget when I was young, I was staying at my grand grandfather's place in Akuru, a place called Lakeview. And Akuru is a place where there are these funny winds. That's you will hear a place called Kisulisuli. Kisulisuli is this wind that goes like this. It comes from Nakuru. You find a place called Kivumbini. Because when Kisulisuli combined with the dust, you will be in trouble in Akuru. Hmm? I remember one time when school, the wind came and carried off eh, the roof of particular classes. So I remember one day, uh, it was on a weekend. I don't know where my brother was. My, my mom was resting. And I remember there was a, a full ghost of a brother who was staying in the plot of my grandfather. And so I saw the wind coming. And I went and closed all our windows and stood at the door and waited. When the wind comes to our compound, I'll lock the door so that I'll not be in trouble. Because to what we, we knew, we used to be told in that kit going like this, there is a devil inside. So that added to my, my trouble. 
But it was so interesting. This full gospel, it was a Saturday. This full gospel brother was sitting on a stool. His family stays somewhere there in the reserve, but he stays in town. He was washing his clothes. So when the wind came close, close, this brother stood up and told, in the name of Jesus, and I watched, I want to see if the wind will obey this brother. Actually, the wind came, a karibu kwa fence, ikateremuka ikaenda kuingine. Praise God. And I, nikashanga, lakini sasa na elewanga, here is a person who understood who he is. And he will exercise authority. Si ya chukwe tukara yake na atoroke kwa nyumba, alambi unisumbu ni taendelea na kazi yangu. I want us to pray briefly for ourselves as we move on. As I've given our sister the chance, what strategy, especially at individual level, let's first, before we pray for groups, at individual level, what strategy has the enemy used to, to, to paralyze you in prayer intercession? Praise God. You have the authority. Praise God. And one of the things that the enemy always does, he tempts us to sin. And when you sin, I give up a place to the devil. You see, that's the strategy the devil. The Bible says, in a, do not give a place to the devil. Praise God. Probably you do, do something. Hmm? Hmm? Yeah. Because one thing the enemy has been using is to provoke people to anger. Yani kitu ya kukukasirisha hivi tu. Salimia mweza kwa mbia bari ya hasira. Kazini nyumbani. Na unakasirika ile makombora ya maneno utaachilia. Unakumbuka umeokoka baada. Wengine ni kukasirikia mungu Na unajua bibi nasema Hasira mwanadamu wa itimizi haki ya mungu Ni mbinu gani Unajua apendwa ulipo okoka ulipewa mamlaka na yeshi You have been given authority and power To subdue snakes and scorpions And to overcome all the power of the enemy And you need to exercise authority like Paul exercised this spirit was operating in a person to cause trouble. Sometimes you can even, you can find, sometimes the devil has found a place in your husband. He's the one who's causing trouble. Hmm? You need to learn to handle. And don't call your husband or your wife a demon. Hmm? 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 Because sometimes it is very sad and it's not supposed to be like that. But we find even in the Bible, Satan succeeding to use the servants of God. Even to use the people of God. And we need to really come to a place where you refuse and not be used by the devil against my husband. Praise God. Amen. I'll not be used by the devil against my wife. Praise God. Najwa zaingina na kutamze unatumiwa na pepo kinyume cha mke wako. Wendi unamukwaza, wendi okikwa? Kikwasa. Unakuta zaingina ni wewe mama. <laughs> Ndiyo Yesu aliangalia, shetani alijua makusudi ya mungu ya Yesu Kristo. Ni kufa kuzikwa na afufuke kwa sababu. Akamua, akifanya hiyo kazi, nitakuwa kwa shida. He decided to use Peter. Praise God. Matthew 16. And Jesus was able to discern. When Jesus talked about his being arrested, suffering and all those things, Peter took him aside. Eh? And you see, Peter was not a bad guy. It's only that as a human being, he loved Jesus. He would want, he can use our weaknesses and our emotions in our weakness and he wouldn't like bad things to happen to Jesus. So he used that weakness and used Peter to try to stop Jesus from fulfilling the purpose of God. But Jesus was able to discern immediately and faced Peter and told, get behind me Satan. You do not have in mind the things of God but the things of men. Praise God. Salimi ya karibu na wewe. Muambie habari. Usikubari kutumiwa na shema. Mwambia baadhi ya kukuwa sa muze, na kukuwa sa na muze, na kukuwa sa watoto, na watoto kutukuwa sa. Nyumbani kuna kuwa kama gaza. Hmm? <laughs> kuna kuwa kama gaza. Na hakuna jirani kwanza, ata jirani ya jakuja, ni njini wenye? The enemy has found a place that is able to use you as a wife, as a mother, as a husband. Shetani na kupitia unasema kitu, unafanya kitu that is affecting. And we need, I usually tell people, if you cannot defeat the devil in your life, you cannot defeat him in anybody's life else. Kama za wezi kujipigania, utapigania nani mwingine. 
We want to usher people into deep levels of warfare ya kupigania nation. Na ye peke yake kujipigania pepo ya mudomu imemulemea. Pepo ya hasira. Sasa ndi unakuta mara nyingi. Sometimes when we usher people into high levels of spiritual warfare, after that they are under attack. Because they do not have individual discipline. So tunapigana vita vya levo ya juu. Alafu ukienda nyumbani wanakuwa mekugojia huku. Na shini wakweli tuwapiga church wakatugojia nyumbani. Siarijua nyumbani unakuanga umiokoka kwa church. Tuwabari ya kuokoka kwa church. Salimia mweza wakabari ya kuokoka kwa church. <laughs> First a lot of people are saved on Sunday. Si wakikuja mkutano wako top 40 days. Will you, be, will you continue praying after these 40 days? Or will you roar the God? Hai sasa mateso ya pasta kutuambia tufunge mekwe. Sasa ni kujija. <laughs> ni kujijaza. Because my biggest concern has been is that the devil is not an issue. Lishindu wa miakalfumbiri riopita. Problems are not an issue. Is we Christians because we can handle problems. Lakini vile tunavyo ishi tunakosa nidhamu. Na ndo ngependa kuambia pa mumeleto na mungu si pale mulikuwa na kule mulitoka. Buwanaoswa sefiwe. Ojue kwamba mungu amewaleta katika utukufu mwingine into a higher level of God's assignment for this ministry. And you need to check yourself. Kabra pastor asaidiwe na roo kuona vile unakaanga. Roo akusaidie kujiona ujirekebishi. Ujo, iyo pepo ina kutumianga, eh? uishinde, usikoje pasta yone ya itoe. That's why Jesus used the principle, remove the rock from your eye. So you don't start by removing the speck in another person's eye, you start with yourself. You remove the, by dealing with yourself. Salimi alie karibu na mambi, jishugulikie kwanza. Jishugulikie. Let's start for a few minutes. I want us to pray for ourselves. I don't know what strategies the enemy has been using to neutralize you in the place of prayer. Thank God in 40 days it provides an environment ya kujijenga tena. But I want you to look into your life. What strategies is he using? Amekua kitumia hali ya afia, hali ya mahitachi. Enda tumbele za buwana. Father, we come before you. It's your command that we should always pray and not cease to pray. But we found ourselves under attack in their place of prayer and intercession. Lord, we are not interceding and praying as we ought to. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we repent that sin of not praying and interceding because it is your command that we pray and intercede, Lord. We repent the sin of not being prayerful of not being of not interceding forgive me forgive each one of us lord in the mighty name of jesus for just like it is any other command when we fail to pray we are sinning lord we repent the sin of prayerlessness in our lives individually lord we repent the sin of prayerlessness in the mighty name of jesus and lack of intercession forgive me lord forgive each one of us individually cleanse us by the blood of jesus in the mighty name of jesus forgive us and cleanse us and today like paul we do take the authority that lord jesus you have given us against the enemy lord and today we exercise that authority against every contrary spirit that has been assigned to neutralize us in the place of prayer and intercession in the mighty name of jesus the spirit of doubt and unbelief the spirit of lack the spirit of marital crisis spirits attacking us in our health that we may be weakened we are unable to pray in the mighty name of jesus every principality every power every rule of darkness, every spiritual wickedness in the high places attacking us in the place of prayer intercession. We bind you now in the mighty name of Jesus and we command you now, desist from your evil maneuvers in our praise and prayer intercession. Be gone in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus. 
Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We give you praise. We pray that in this conference of awakening, we shall be awakened again in the praise of prayer and intercession individually and corporately, even in this gathering. And over this nation, there shall be an awakening and the praise of prayer and intercession in the mighty name of Jesus. We come against, Lord, every principality, every power, every ruler of darkness, every spiritual wickedness place was assigned against us in the place of prayer. We bind you in the mighty name of Jesus. We bind you and we command you to desist from your maneuvers in our place of prayer. Be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Doubt and unbelief, sleep and slumber, be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit of sleep and slumber, every spirit of lethargy, every spirit of slackness, be gone. Laziness, be gone. Heaviness, be gone. In the mighty name of Jesus, depart from our lives, depart from our place of prayer. You'll not stop us in the mighty name of Jesus. You'll not stop us in our individual, even in our corporate prayer. You'll not stop us in the mighty name of Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory in the mighty name of Jesus. 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 If you are filled with the Holy Ghost, I want you to start praying in other tongues. In the mighty name of Jesus. Yandolobo, Yakatolabo, Zenayande, Zeketaleba, Yakatelabo, Cateleba, Yakatileba, Sandolobo, Cateleba, Yakatelabolobo, Shiriba, Sandolobo, Cateleba, Yakatileba, Sandolobo, Cateleba, Yakatelabolobo, Shalaba, Yakatolobo, Shalaba, Yakandolobo, Shalaba, Yaka. Every principality, every power, every ruler of darkness, every spiritual weakness in high places attacking us in the place of prayer individually and corporately. We bind you in the name of Jesus. We disarm you in the mighty name of Jesus and we command you and rebuke you from the place of prayer individually and corporately. Be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Sakaya Liba, Sandolobo Shalliba, Sandolobo Shalliba, Yakate Ketile Liba, in the mighty name of Jesus. I want you right now, let's go back to our homes because you come from our home. Probably, like we see this spirit using this girl, probably the spirit has been using your husband, using you. You know what the enemy has been using to neutralize. Address, resist that spirit. Praise God. Don't fight your husband. It's only a vessel like that girl. Praise God. Fight for your husband. Fight for your wife. Fight for your children. Fight for those people that the enemy, a spirit is getting them to get you angry. To get you frustrated. I want you to fight for them, for yourself and for them. Just go take that authority the Lord Jesus has given you. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for our husband and our wives and our children, even for our households. We come against you unclean spirits that are using them in the place of prayer to frustrate us and to remit us. In the mighty name of Jesus, every spirit of strife and conflict, every spirit of strife and conflict, 
and misunderstanding. We rebuke in the mighty name of Jesus every spirit bringing strife and conflict and misunderstanding. We rebuke in the mighty name of Jesus. We rebuke in the mighty name of Jesus. Go to your home. Fight those spirits are using you and your family to neutralize one another in prayer. Is it your husband? Is it your wife? Is it your children? Is it your house helper? In the mighty name of Jesus, rebuke those spirits of strife and conflict and misunderstanding. In the mighty name of Jesus, those spirits of division, rebuke them. In the mighty name of Jesus, command them to depart from your family, from your husband, from your wife, from your children, from your house helper. In the mighty name of Jesus, from your employees, pray in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, we worship you, our God. We give you praise. We give you honor. We give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. I felt before we move, we'll deal with the architect and the structure of this place in the spirit. I felt the Lord wants us to deal with us at individual level. Praise God. At individual level. Eh? So that you may be positioned. Because you need to be positioned in the place of prayer. Just sit briefly. I explain something that is very important here to understand. You see the way the enemy works, you need to understand. Thank God that when you are born again, you are born again, you are brought from the kingdom of darkness in the kingdom of light, and the Lord Jesus gave us authority. He gave us his weapons. And there are a lot of things sometimes we ask God to do, but God expects us to use authority. Like Moses, Moses, God had given Moses authority and power through the rod he was carrying. And as a priest, Moses cried out to God. And Moses, God told Moses, why are you crying to me? <laughs> because there are some things God expects us to deal with. Uh, uh, he has given us authority. We need to know the things that God has given us as to authority to do, to use, and use that authority in those situations. Uh, there are places the Lord will call us to, to weep, to groan, to cry. But there are times the Lord wonders, what's your problem? I've given what you need to deal with what you are facing. Praise God. I want us quickly to look at this dimension that is very important because in the Bible we want to see we have the kingdom of darkness and the king of that kingdom is Satan. And he works together with the, with the, with the fallen angels that rebelled against God together with him. These, are the, these fallen angels are the ones that we refer as principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual weakness in the high places. So, that's why if you read Ephesians, the Bible doesn't tell us that actually that we wrestle against Satan. Satan is one of Anapambana nasi kupitia the principalities. Let's look at that scripture. Sometimes you have to be very keen when you are reading the Bible. See what the word of God is telling us. You want to look at that scripture. In Ephesians, the Bible says something very important. Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6, we start from verse 10. The Bible says very well, says, Finally, brethren, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. You cannot fight warfare when you are weak. You need to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Weak people cannot fight, even physically. Physically, when you are weak, you cannot fight. <laughs> Unaona mtu ana nguvu unasalenda mapema na samista kangi vita mimi ni mtu wa amani. Na si ati kwamba ni mtu wa amani ni umeona huyu jamaa vile anakaa ata ninyoro ana nguvu and you are weak. 
The same thing in which we are told in warfare, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Greet the person next to you. Because you need to sense, we need to say, there are sometimes you sense yourself in the spirit of it, I'm weak. And you need actually to deal with things because in reality, wale to make a car kwa mungu, na juanga sa ile uko chini, na sa ile uko ju. Ona juanga, sa hai. Hata kuna mutu taleto uombe, upeane appointment next week. <laughs> Ukiwa pastor na sema, eh, kadari yangu, kuja next Tuesday. Mana unazikia you are not strong. <laughs> Unaletewa kesi, unaangalia hivi kuna mama moja alikuja kanisani, ni muombe, akakuja ni muombe. Kesi yake, ilikuwa unajua, you don't know everything and you have not experienced any. She was an elder woman, na mepitia tengamote ya maisha, na ni muzito. Hata hmm? kire kirimponya ni imani ya kesi yangu. Mana aliponieleza. Aliniangalia, akaona bishop amestu. Amestuka, akani ya bishop, mi ile mafuta na jua mungu amekupaka, itanimalizia isha. <laughs> so she had more faith in the grace I have than me. Mana yo kesi yake, nilikuwa, nalipo, nilimuambea kwa imani yake. <laughs> Buwanazo asefe? Eh, eh. Mana kuna wakati mkini unasikia. And that's why we need to be strong, to grow in Christ. Because ujue kwamba, tunapo endelea tuta kutana mambo ya liyo chini, ni mambo ya liyo juu. So we need to keep growing. That's why the Bible says that grow in grace. Praise God. Grow in grace. We need to keep growing. Because the challenges we are facing are not getting lesser. They are becoming strong. So we need to grow in grace. And that's why the Bible tells us, be strong in the Lord. And they greet the, your neighbor there to tell them, be strong in the Lord. And the power of his might. Hmm. I know we are going to the gym, Ufanye. Yeah, you are trying to be strong, and it is good to be very strong in the flesh. Fanya tis, mazoezi, jenga, misuri, but also in the spirit. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Because the battle we are fighting is a spiritual battle. Then we are told, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the walls of the devil. Put on. The Bible does not tell God will put, on, put it on on you. So, Ebu ni ulizie, tumiambio put on, how do you do that? <laughs> so you are told be strong in the Lord and the power of his might so how do you become strong in the Lord and the power of his might now there are some things you are told to do yeah you are not told that God will do it for you you are told be strong in the Lord and the power of his might so so how do you become st how do we become strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Kudingana wewe. How do you become strong in the Lord and the power of how? To saidiye kidogo. Uziseme ile ujui vile unajua. Maana na mungu wa mekusaidia. To depend on the Lord by his word. To depend on the Lord by his word. Haya. We are nakaka maticha meshika vizuri msaidia to saidia. Because there are some things in the Bible, be strong in the Lord and the power. How do you do that? I think I think it's uh, reading the word, mm. uh, drawing closer to God by worshiping him, mm. re, uh, studying the word, mm. and, and basically mm. knowing that you are close to God. You have not gone further, but you are coming nearer and nearer to him. Amen. Yeah. So there are those principles, both of them are right, and there are many answers to this issue. There are things that cause us to grow, cause us to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. One of it is the word. Praise God. Number two is prayer. Especially your fellowship with God in word and prayer makes you strong. There is that individual fellowship with God in word and prayer. For example, when we come to such conferences, you also grow, you become strong. It's good. Fellowships are very important. Fellowships are very important. Salimi alie karibu na we. Wachanga mambo ya kukosa ushirika. You are too busy. Na maompi, ma excuse minki. You need to know the things that cause us to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. That's why some of us, when some of these battles come, 
they, are, they cannot withstand them because you are not strong. Praise God. And I want to tell you, as servants of God, we cannot fight every battle for you. Some battles in Isa, Nizako. Na utapigia mchungaji si mchuoni ya chukui yako shuguri ya menda safari, amezima. Na unategemeanga bishop kuwa na ngufu. Ya nikiambia, nikipigia tu reverend, kapepo kameishia. Unapiga, unakuta reverend ya chukui simu. Kana kunyonga. Unajua Kenya munapenda kupiganiwa sana na kuombewa sana. Salimia rie kalimambi wacha uvifu. Take responsibility of your spiritual. Kuna mahali pa mchungaji. Na hata siku ya mwisho siku ya kiyama, hatu amuta piga magoti na mchungaji wako mbele ya kiticha ukumu ni wewe mwenyeni. You need to be responsible for yourself. Some people are so careless, they can do anything, but when they get to the problems, si pasi yako. Taniombea. Hmm? Lazy Christians. Hmm? Watu wanataka kuombea wapeo vifagio wa uziwe. You don't want to fast and pray. Eh? Unataka tu ombea wa nointing all uende ukarusha kwa nyumba. Pepo zitoke. Eh? Ambia mwenzako toka kwa hiyo toto ya kiroho na ujinga ya kiroho. You know, we have tried to mod modernize faith. <laughs> we have tried to modernize faith, make things quick and easy. But you can never, faith is faith. You have to apply those. Fasting and prayer will not go. There are things that you have to follow to fast and pray. You want to I'm challenging you individually. Be responsible for your Christian life. Pray, read the word of God. Pana mahali pa mchungaji. Lakini sehemu yako sima? Simama. Mana mwisho wa safari hii. Hutaenda kuambia mungu kipiga kita. Bishop ndio haku niombea. <laughs> Pastor ndio haku nisaidia. Uh -uh. I want to believe almost 95%. Si tusimame tukaribisha mtumishi wa Mungu appreciate ha tusimame tu tu appreciate karibu mtumishi wa Mungu Welcome Tusikie sauti yako kidogo Niendele sawa karibu sana Nimeshikwa na mchungaji vizuri amenikaribisha tumeendelea vizuri na nashukuru Mungu Praise God so I'm challenging each one of you to have personal responsibility. Praise God. Ya maisha yako as a Christian, that you do the thing that you need to do to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Because many people are so weak that when the battles come, they are overcome. That's why Ephesians says, Ephesians 6 verse 10, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. So you need to do the things that are in the word of God that we are told to do that make us strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Because you cannot fight a battles when you are weak. You have to be strong. Praise God. The other thing we are told there in the Bible to put on the whole armor of God. So how do you do that? Huh? I jump your pastor kuvarish. Unajua there are things the Bible says <laughs> you do. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Then you are told to put on the whole armor of God. So how do you do that? How do you do that? You are told to do that. And you are told, finally, when you put on the whole armor of God, the Bible says very well, that you may be able to stand against the walls of the enemy. The walls of the enemy. So the instructions that are given in the Bible that we are supposed to follow. Na saingine tutu naingia tu kwa vita bila kufuata instructions. Unanyorosho. Unaambio vice la zote za mungu wa unenda kupigana na shababu meva attraction. Unaingia kwa vita na kaptula na vest. These, these scriptures are not written just for quoting. You are told to do it. Put on the whole armor of God. 
that you may be able to overcome the walls, the strategies, the schemes of the evil one. So it means one thing we are told we are more than conquerors. And here we are told to be strong in the Lord and the power of his might and to put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to overcome the walls of the enemy. So whatever strategies of the enemy has, we can overcome them. Praise God. Because the Lord has made the provision for us and has given us instruction. The biggest issue individually, do you follow these instructions? Praise God. Kuna kazi nenda kufanyika leo na kesho. A deep work. And sometimes I like positioning people. Positioning people. And I thank God you've been prayer. And that was, I was telling people in church, kambia, nina ujasiri kile kitu nenda kukonga kita. Kama watu wamekua kwa maombi, na kuna wala wamekua, nani ajakua siri ya sumekua kikula kisiri siri. Naomba mungu wa kusambe usiwe ulikuwa na cheza karata. Na kujo mejipangusa mdomo. <coughs> Tunafunga. Na ye siku wa rubaini, uata kilo zimiongezeka. <laughs> Salimia mweza kwa mbiye buwana sifiwe. I believe you fasted. You are sincere. And you don't miss food. You also prayed. Praise God. Hii mambo tunafanya ni ya mungu si mchesu. And as I told you. A mahali hapa mmeleto wa si mahali mulikuwa. God has brought you physically into a new place. Also spiritually. And. As God has brought you these people, nikambia kwamba mungu wa mewerete huduma hii at a higher level of assignment katika huduma hii. There are a lot of assignments you people have fulfilled. And mungu, I quoted to them what Maurice Seruro used to say, God will never use you unless he first gives you an experience. So the experiences that God has taken you as servants of God and as a ministry individually, to trust to be you to this place. And one thing the Lord told me to tell you people, that this place will require high level of discipline. Individually. Unajua kanisa ni watu. Na wana wanaharibu kanisa ni mtu moja kuharibika. So can you imagine each one of us is disciplined? Then the devil wana mali pa kuingia katikati yetu. Hakuna mtu wanakosesha mchungaji usingi. Na stress mana hakai vizuri ya na vituko na mambo mengi. It's a disciplined force. Because God has moved this work into, into a higher dimension, a higher level, and to a higher assignment. There are so many assignments they have to fulfill like any other ministry. And this is another assignment the Lord has brought them to fulfill from here, which is higher than the others. Which requires you as has helped us together with them to be individually disciplined. Praise God. That individually you are strong in the Lord and the power of your might. Hmm? Hmm? That you are put on. You know how to put on the whole armor of God. Sasa si kujo na kuja kuvarisho na pastor. You know where to stand to your place. And me, I believe the far you people have come from God. There are many things that you've been taught and you know. And now you need to know those things were not stories. It is time to implement that word that you've been taught. It is time to leave it up. Not to talk about it, but to leave it. Praise God. Because where you have come is not where you are. In the physical, in the spirit. And this work has moved to a higher dimension of an assignment that God, in this work, God wants to be fulfilled. There are many assignments. A vision within it has many assignments. And this assignment is a higher assignment than the others. And the other assignments. And because of God's faithfulness of his servants and you people standing them, God could trust you to bring to this place. So each one of us proved to be faithful. Praise God. Prove to be faithful to what God has called you to be in this work. Praise God. Kule kwetu watu na jikokota tunawaitanga jira. Jira mdajua ni huirbaru. Tunaita jira kule salimia muweza kwa mbeo siwe jira ya huduma. Unajua jira jipere kanki inasukumangwa. Praise God. 
Usiwe jira katika huduma wa kusukumwa. Do what you are supposed to do because it is the Lord you are serving. These servants of God, what God has, you say, ni pastor, ni niweka, ni fanyanga. No, it's God who used them to place you in your rightful place to do what you are supposed to do in this work. So you are not serving the servants of God. It's the Lord that you are serving. Be faithful in that place. Praise God. And as I've told you that this important high level of discipline be required in prayer, in giving. There is something I'll touch on giving. Because this place will come. Giving is one of the most powerful weapons in warfare. I'll touch it as on we go before we finish on Sunday. The Lord will allow me to touch on that. Because whatever you people are doing here, it is more, not more than about you individually. It is more because the assignment you have, it has to do. There are people who don't know what they, they know what you know. They are not in a place. And the place God has placed this work, it is because of many lives. Your obedience, whatever you do, it will affect this nation. God has wanted to trust this responsibility to some people in this city. And they didn't prove very faithful. And the Lord has brought you people into a very important place. Not because you are better than them. Never The Bible says consider others better than yourselves. We don't compete. In the word of God we consider others. So the Lord has not brought you in this position because you are better than those. But because he has chosen you to do it. Praise God. And you need to prove faithful, especially at an individual level. And especially we touch on the area of giving. It's so important. The giving will be so important. It will be a very powerful weapon in this place. Because when you give things like tithe, there you don't fight the devil. You release God to fight the battle. And you are going to understand how our giving will affect the economy of this nation. We are just complaining about the economy. We need to know the giving of the church. If the church will understand its giving, we can turn the economy around. Hmm. We will understand warfare through giving. It's very, very important. Where you don't even rebuke the devil, when you give God, God gets busy dealing with the enemy. We'll understand with that dimension. Hmm? And we are looking up to you and challenging you. Many ministries have their many assignments. Like if there is something about this place, if you are faithful in those dimensions that the Lord has spoken to you, and also this dimension of giving will touch it in some particular place. When we touch it, you will understand it will turn. It will start bringing the healing of this economy, of the nation. Praise God. So, thank God you are here as an individual. God will bless you individually. He'll bless you as a family. He'll bless you as a ministry. But you hear you are for something bigger than as individuals. God is looking at this nation and nations. And God is saying, I believe I found the right people who will prove faithful in what I want to be done. Praise God. So I thank God for the assignments he has given the ministry I mean, and other ministries and the Lord of what he has entrusted you people with. And the Lord put a lot of heavy, the responsibility you have that each one has to be serious in his place. What you're supposed to do and do it. And do it faithful as unto the Lord, not as unto man. Praise God. And that's why we began with the place of prayer. Because there have been a very heavy battle in the place of prayer. The enemy was not amused with the prayer and intercession that went on in 2022. Because we brought a lot of destruction and loss to the kingdom of darkness. And as I said, the problem of the church, mainly in Kenya, and we have been warned many times by the servants of God, our intercession, our prayer intercession in this nation goes as far concerning problems and needs. So when problems are solved and needs are met, we stop praying and interceding. And I told you that prayer intercession is supposed to focus on destiny, not problems and needs. We need to pray. God allows us to pray for issues when they arise. But when problems and needs are met through prayer, remember we have not reached our destiny. We need to keep praying until we reach the destiny. And the purpose of God is fulfilled. 
mwambie maombi na maombezi si ya kumaliza shida zako tu na kukutana na mahitaji yako ni ya kufikia kusudi la Mungu mwambie Mungu akikutana na mahitaji yako na amalize shida zako endelea kuomba na usiwache kuomba until you reach your destiny praise god it's very very important that you be able to understand maana tunapomaliza siku hizi 40 nimekuwa katika maombi the lord will be repositioning new people mm. positioning in your place because of the assignment that he has for you and it is a high level assignment for the kwa kazi hii na mkifanya sehemu yenu Kenya itasaidika mwili wa Kristo utasaidika na ndio nimekuta hii mikutano is very interesting servant of God that every time we have these conferences there is a major meeting coming you see that the lord is as if uses so you need to understand the dimension of this work and ministry and these conferences the other time we had every meeting there is a major national meeting yes. and a servant of god god wants to do something in this nation yes. the servant of god benhin will be coming soon praise god yes. and i wonder is it a coincidence why always it is not there is something that god unaweza hata kukosa kufanywa asha huko lakini kile kitafanya hapa hapa god will do what he wants to do there are sometimes I look in some meetings and I know what they are saying, 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 they are through a servant of God. Let's pray. Let's pray. I remember one of my intercessors, he's a church elder, he shared with me, and he told me we need to pray for this meeting that is coming. I told him what he told me. I saw a very big gathering in Kasarani. And, but in the, in the gathering, there were sons of the wickedness working particular ways to frustrate the purpose of God. He was taken in a vision to Kasarani, and the meeting was there. And there were, we were there, all servants of God from all places. But in the place, there are sons of the wicked one, infiltrating to manipulate and to frustrate what God wants come to do. So that's a meeting that has to do with our nation. It will do something for this nation. And what will happen in this meeting? will enable the servant of God to do what God wants him to do in this nation. There are some things he'll be able to accomplish. Isi marake ya kwanza amekuja Kenya hii na amekuja anatoka mbi. Lakini sahi kuna watu kama wewe uko hapa kuomba that will cause God to achieve and purpose. We don't want servants of high level of God who leave this nation grieving. Hmm? Because they came to Kenya sent by God, but they live grieving when they, they saw what was going on in the church. God forgive us. Say, Heavenly Father, forgive us, Lord, where we have frustrated your purpose in your servants when you sent your servants to us from within and without in this nation. And all that you are concerned was our personal interests. Forgive our selfishness. Forgive us, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we pray for the year 2024 that individually in the church of Kenya, we shall not frustrate your purpose in this nation. But Lord, we shall participate in helping your purposes to be fulfilled and to succeed in this nation. Forgive us individually and corporate as your church, your servants, and all the saints. Forgive us in the past years where we have frustrated your purpose as you've sent your servants to us individually and corporately from inside Kenya and outside Kenya. Forgive us, Lord. Have mercy on us. We pray that henceforth, Lord, we shall not frustrate your purpose. 
for this nation, for our cities. But God, we shall, Lord, be workers together with you in the fulfillment of your purpose for this nation. In Jesus' name, we prayed and believed. Say amen. amen. Praise God. So our God is a faithful God. So as I said, as we read Ephesians, because there's something I will pray for people here before we move on. We need to understand the way we've been many people in place of prayer and intercession, they have been neutralized. And I gave you a chance of you to share how have you been neutralized in the place of prayer and intercession, what strategies the enemy has used to fight you. Praise God. So we need to understand not only in place of prayer and intercession, whatever place of ministry God has placed you in his work, you need to understand that the ministry is work and warfare. Tell your friend, ministry, ministry. Is, work is work and warfare. And warfare. That's why if you pray instruments like our brother, you need to know being an instrumentalist, this is work and it is warfare. The enemy will fight you to get you from this place. He'll do anything. You are a Nash. You are a singer. You'll be fought. We find many times losing workers in the church because most workers do not know that ministry is work and warfare. The enemy sees how you are a good usher in the church, hmm? a good intercessor. Whatever place you have, and he decides who you are to honor. And some of you are neutralized through marital battles. You are unable to do what you are supposed to do because with those kind of crises, you are unable, if you are an intercessor, you are unable to pray. They know you are a giver. You are a kingdom supporter. They decide to attack you financially. So I ask your friend, how have you been attacked by the enemy? So how has the enemy fought in your place of ministry? Watch at Usia Tafta Mungina Niriona Kinyorosha and Ashatan, Yako Mwenyewe, Katika Kila Munga Mekuita Ufanya Katika Nyumba Mungu. How has the enemy been fighting you to stop you? Because that if you cannot fight for yourself, you cannot fight for anybody else. You've learned to fight for yourself. To be able to know how is the enemy fighting me in ministry. Because Huduma Nikazi na Nivi na Nivita. So most of us have imagination. Nikitumikia mungu, mungu wata kubali shetani ya nikuze. Sita kuwa na shida, mambu itakuwa sa. Na ndi watu wengine, kambia, mi pastor, mi kuwa nafikiria, mi kuwa nafikiria ukitumikia mungu, eh, eh, kutakuwa sa. They only know dimension of work. Na joy, you serve God, I'll get blessed. Surely you'll get blessed, but you have an enemy of the work of God who will fight you. He's called the devil. Uriza mwenzako na adu ya mekua kipambana na wewe kwa njiagani katika mahali pa huduma. That you are unable to do, you are not doing effective, or even you have stopped doing what God has called you to do in ministry. You must understand. Shetana natumia dada mungine kukukwasa. Alafu na sema si imbi tena. Mwambi wachai utoto, elewa ni shetani si dad. Mkubu asha ringale kuambia Wache jambo fulani ukafura. Hata sifanyi ya shari. Na uliko nareke bisho. Kiburi yako tu. Eh? Eh? And you are finding a lot of gaps. In the place of ministry. In the place of ministry. Kwa sababu. Shetani amejua kupambana na watu katika mahali pa huduma. Sema huduma ni kazi. Na ni vita. Bwana osa sefiri. Huduma ni kazi njema. Na mungu atakubariki. Lakini ufalme wa giza, haufra yu kifanya yu kazi. You'll experience warfare. Kutoka kwako nyumbani, kama tatumia jambo kutoka kwako kukuneutralize, au kutoka jambo kanisani. Shetani halipo jaribu kujaribu kuneutralize yesu halikosa. Halitafuta kwa ushirika, halipata Judas. Na kakuta Judas jamana penda pe, hata naibanga sada, na nitereshala. That was the door that the devil used in. Alajua ujamaa tukipee pesa, hata msaliti yesu. Praise God. So we need to, nandio, ninapenda kurudia hiyo neno, ati shetani asiji ya kapata kutushinda, mana tukosi kujua mbinu zake. Ne mbinu zipi adui anatumia kupambana na wewe katika huduma. Je, anatumia marito problems, shida na watoto, shida kiafia, financial problems. 
or people rising against you. You need to know. Shetani atatumia hali na mazingara na watu na vitu. And you need to exercise the authority to deal with the devil. Si kupigana na watu na kulalamika kuhusu mambo. Bwana yosa sifiri. Na guzia mambo haya, mana sasa mmeingia mahali ambapo. Whatever responsibility God has given you, you have to be serious and committed and disciplined. Bwana yosa sifiri. It's very important. Knowing that I'm serving God. So we are told that we are not to overcome the words of the devil. Alafu Ephesians, I just said tunapigana na shetani, ah ah, imesema vizuri kwamba, we are not wrestling with flesh and blood. Salimia rie karibu na we. Mwampia tuwache hii kundana tunapigana. Muuliza unauliza nga mze yako nini sasa? Na mkia muna uliza nani? Kweri ya ni pepo? Pastor ni pepo, mze ya kanisa muimbachi. We are waging war against principalities and powers. Rulers of darkness and spiritual weakness in the heavenly places. And I told you that Satan, yeah, he, he, that's the kingdom of darkness. There are structures in place which I'll not have time to explain. And they are functioning. Because sometimes you need to understand structures to bring them. Like Samson, he had fought the Philistines for all those years. But when he was taken to the temple of Dagon, their stronghold, he asked the young man who was guiding him, because he had no eyes, to take him to the central two pillars that were supporting the structure. Sometimes you waste time fighting small demons. Huh? Huh? And you can take many years. But in one day, the Bible says he destroyed more Philistines than all his life, 20 years. Because now he was in a strategic place of warfare. Though alikuwa memungua macho, wakazemata kama mungu naishia, lakini ni kubalisha tu. And by pushing those pillars, the whole structure, he destroyed the kingdom of the Philistines. There are times to understand those things when you go to levels of warfare deep levels. Na kuna kitu taguzia takapo pata kweza kuendelea. So one thing we need to understand, the enemy, dunia hii mungu alipo yumba, the heavens, even the highest heavens belongs to the Lord, but the earth he gave to man. This earth belongs to us. And when God created the earth, he gave the responsibility of this earth to man. But we gave that responsibility of ruling the earth to the devil. We need to understand the Bible very well. There are scriptures you read, you will get shocked. Because the, war, the earth and the fullness thereof, and they that dwell in it, belong to God. Yes, it belongs to the Lord. But when God created the heavens and the earth, he gave the earth to human responsibility at a while. But one of the saddest scriptures that I find in the Bible is First John chapter 5, verse 19. The Bible says something very important there. It says, we know that we are children of God and that the whole world, the whole world is under the control of the evil one. Ati ulimwengu wote uko chini ya utawala ule muofu. Si kwa sababu alipewa utawala na mungu, alipewa na mwanadamu, alikuwa mepewa na utawala na mungu. But when we get saved, we need to understand, when we get saved, Though the whole world is under the control of the evil one, when we get saved, we are not under the control of the evil one. Because the Bible says in Colossians, to mehamisho kutoka utawala wa giza, tukaleto katika utawala wa nul. We are under the control of the kingdom of darkness. And more than that, we have been given authority. In this world, the enemy... Our God, vile tu mungu, huwa anafanya kazi duniani kupitia watu. Pia adui anafanya kazi kupitia wa? Anafanya kazi kupitia watu. Tunawaita wana wa uofu. Na wanajua kufanya kazi yao. It is the saddest. They operate. And so if people do not understand that dimension of warfare, I like a man of God we welcomed and was teaching us about warfare in the realm of men. Najwa, there is a warfare in the realm of demons, spirits. But you are dealing with warfare in the realm of men. Hmm? Where the enemy is using people. And we need to understand that dimension of warfare. That's why Jesus told us he has sent us sheep like wolves, like, like, like sheep among wolves. When we are talking of wolves, we are talking of the sons of the evil one, whom he uses.
And we need to be very discerning as a church. Jesus was, Jesus was very discerning in his ministry. And that's why we need to understand this dimension of warfare that is very important at this time. That you see in Luke 13, you know Luke 13, think verse 38 there, when the Pharisees and the Sadducees told Jerusalem, Jesus to depart from Jerusalem because Herod will kill him. Hmm? Herod will kill him. And what did Jesus say? Tell that fox. We need to understand a fox is a wild dog. Hapa Yesu ana address. Akaambia, akaambia ndene mwambia huyo mvua mwitu nita ponya, nita toa pepo, nita hudumu, mpaka nimalize kazi yangu. And you know the family of Herod belonged to the sons of the evil one. That family was used by the devil. Jesus was fought by the devil using the sons of the evil one, the family of Herod. Wakati alizaliwa, Herod alie kuwako, si alitaka kumuwa kiwa mtoto. Haya, toka hapo, tukamaliza hiyo chapter. Sasa hako kwa huduma, bado, the evil one is using that family of Herod because it is not the same Herod now who wanted to kill Jesus when he was in ministry. Later we find in Act 12, another Herod is being used by the dead. He takes James and have him killed. So the enemy... Apart from using Satan, apart from using foreign angels, he uses wicked people against. And there is something I want you to understand. Because what we call witchcraft is the power of Satan. Hmm? Witchcraft is the power of Satan. We may call it sorcery, uganga, mambo mingi. Simply, it is the power of Satan. Just as we, the servants of God, use the power of God, the sons of the evil one function by using the power of the evil one. And that's why in the Bible, the Bible says of Galatians 3, Paul did ask the Galatians church, who has bewitched you? The church can be bewitched. We need to understand. Because the evil one, the evil one and his fallen angels do use, they do use the, the, the sons of evil to do evil to the sons of the kingdom. And if you are not discerning, you can be in a lot of trouble. That's why Paul was so furious. And he said, whoever is causing you trouble, let him take his judgment. We need to understand that we need to be very careful in the levels that we are getting to. That the sons of the evil one, one hour wolf, then they'll infiltrate the church. Not that they are beginning. Nandi wanavango, ni mbuwa mwitu wanavango zi ya kondo. Unafikiria ni ndugu na dada kama we? Ni ndugu kama we, ni muhubiri kama we. Lakini ni mbuwa mwitu wanavango zi ya kondo. So we need to be careful of the infiltration of the kingdom of darkness in the church, in our families, in their places of work, through the sons of the evil one. Because when they come amongst us, they are wolves, but they put on sheepskin. And you think, and they are being used to infiltrate and fight us from within, cause division, strife and conflict in the church. But I thank God because of his word. When the church prays, eh, when the church prays, that battle is won, especially maintaining the fire of the altar. There are standards in Kambia, mother bow even a moto, kiasi kwamba nyoka wezi kukaa katikati yetu. Bwana osa sefiwe. The saddest thing you have also to be very careful is that we need discernment so that we stop witch hunting because you can accuse somebody. It has happened in this Kenya. An innocent person is accused as a devil. Ni wa shetani na si wa shetani. That is called witch hunting. That is not discernment. Eh? Eh? But we need to be very careful in this level of warfare. Infiltration of the, of, the, of the kingdom of God by the sons of wickedness who come as wolves, but they put on sheepskin. And when they come, they are very tricky. There is a battle I've been fighting in the church. And I encourage people, and I said I'll touch in the area of giving, the area of giving. That's why it is important in your business to tithe from your business. That's why even as a ministry needs to tithe. Because 
the Bible talks about giving the tithe of tithes, which releases the Lord to fight. A ministry tithe causes the God to rebuke the devourer at the level of the ministry. When you give individually your tithe and offering, you cause the devil to rebuke the devil at an individual level. There is an attack especially because the kingdom needs finances. And so many people are under attack in their place of work. Because that's where we get our finances. To meet our needs and to do the work of God. To do the work of God. So the things I'm touching on are very important because they are going to help you fulfill this assignment because you have carried out other assignments and the Lord will continue to bless you. This is a higher assignment which requires discipline. Praise God. Which requires the knowledge, the wisdom, and deep understanding by God through the Holy Spirit. Praise God. And so a lot of people need to understand in those places, eh, those places because you are finding people that the enemy using the sons of the wicked one, they have, I call them friendly enemies, because the sons of the wicked and, and of the wicked one, one strategy they use about us is to be friendly. Praise God. Amen. I call them friendly enemies. So they use friendship to destroy us, to fight us, and you are not discerning. Even when the Holy Spirit alerts you in your conscience, yeah, this guy looks so okay and good, but your conscience is telling you, Ay, green light, kuna kitu. Kuna kitu. Lakini wewe, because physically, na nini wanangi ubaya ule mtu na kile kitu, wewe unasema, lakini miya jai kunifanya kitu mbaya, si yonangi ubaya wake. Sometimes people realize it too late when so much harm has been done in their lives. Hmm? Marriages destroyed, business destroyed, they are very tricky, especially in gossip. Wakikuja katikati wananza nafanya, alafu pole pole, they start ananza kurusha kaneno mamocha. Na sikuizu unaona pasi aji. And they don't continue from there. <laughs> they are planted a seed of suspicion. They are very tricky. Ukikuta, ukianza kukuta watu kama hauna sikuizu unaona aji, anahubirije sikuizu. <laughs> they are very strategic in attacking. Because the moment they attack your heart in regard to the servants of God, unaondoka chini ya neema ya watumishi wa mungu. Mana kitu cha kwanza ni kukuondosha chini ya neema ya wachungaji ambao mungu wamepata kukupea. Mana ni wachungaji wamepewa neema. And the moment they manage to get your heart, and move it from the covering that God has given you through the servants of God. Utanyorosho. Buwanasa sefiwe. Ebu angalia kalibu na ewe. Mwangalie nitajichunga na ewe. Mwambie pepo wakikuingia kama pita nitajua. Na nitakukeme. Unaanza story. Sasa na kama uwezi kupiga na pepo za kanisa. Za muji ndi utaweza na naso. Zako ndi utaweza na naso. Kama shetani tuwa natumia mzee kukukwasa ya taifa utawezana na hakikuja na vikwazo vya kitaifa. <laughs> Wana yosu asefiwe. So one thing that I feel the Lord wanted me to do in this first session is to alert you and to be very sensitive. To be very sensitive individually katika mahali mungu wa mepata kuwaleta. Kama vile nisema, there is what we call spiritual architecture and structures of places na hiyo ni kitu Mungu aliniambia tuweza kushirikiana na watumishi wa Mungu in this place that you have come because the spiritual architecture and and structures of this place building are not that okay and they'll be dealt with they are not to trouble you they'll be dealt with and things will be okay as i told you the way joseph goes jacob sleeps in a place called luz he gives a revelation of what that place is spiritually the spiritual structure, but to bring the manifestation of the spiritual structure of God in that ground, he had to raise an altar. <laughs> what he did in the, he saw in the spirit, now he raised an altar and anoints it to activate the spiritual architecture and structure of what he saw in the spirit on the ground. Praise God. 
Ndi watu wengine huwa unashangaa umejenga nyumba ya moyo lakini ukiomba unaonyesha ngo kuwa kanyumba ya samani ya nyasi. <laughs> In dreams. Na nasio lakini tunakaa nyumba ya mawe, si tulijenga ya mawe. Eh? Eh? Ni kwa sababu hiyo ni physical umejenga. Maana nyumba ni spiritual. Ambia mtu nyumba ni spi ni spiritual. <laughs> So if you don't enter in the spirit and change, uneza kujenga nyumba mzuri, eh? lakini katika ulimuengu wa roho, the spiritual structure of your habitation ni hile kanyumba ya kwenye zamani. Eh? Eh? Salimi ya mweza kwa ambiendi, unautanga kila zamani na hile kajikoni ya zamani ya kwenye. Ugishaki. Na unakaa na ropi. <laughs> lakini unajikutanga kwa pigesha, hile nyumba ya zamani, lakini unakaa nyumba smart. <laughs> eh? Eh? Because what matters most is where you are in the spirit. In the spirit. Hmm. Hmm. That's when you need to go on a category of mwengu wa roho ya mai. Hmm. And you need to go on a jikuta ukamali pa ajabu. Lakini the physical and you need to go on a category of mwengu wa roho ya mai. huko kwa nyumba hili ya msuri fi. Lakini the spirit kuna kule huko. Nataka niwahimize kama kuna watu wametumika kupambana nasi katika kazi ya huduma is the sons of the wicked one who have been taught to infiltrate and associate with us and because of lack of judgment wametumika kufunga watu wengi wasiweze kuomba wasiweze kufu wasiweze kufunga wasiweze kujitoa katika kazi ya Mungu they have been sent to do that hmm? na wana infiltrate na unapambano na wewe and we are going to pray. I feel there is a prayer that I need to pray. That is very important. Mana kuna kitu tunaitangwa vile kanisa la wagaratia liliambio. Nani amewaroga. So people can be bewitched. Na kile kinafanya. You know witchcraft is a power of Satan. But how do we get bewitched? Satan looks for legal grounds that he can use to attack our lives. If he finds a legal ground. For example, you look in your business. If you remember, I thank God for the servant of God, although she has gone through many challenges, the servant of God, Margaret Wanjiro. And the way she began her ministry and the things he was teaching us because there's where he came, the world he came in, the world of business or the other side of witchcraft. And one thing she told us how they were fighting because the people who do business or do whatever career they carry, and they have made a covenant with the kingdom of darkness. One assignment they have is to fight the children of the light. And she explained very well the way they were fighting businesses in this city. And one thing where they were fighting, one thing they'll lack in the realm of the spirit, they'll know a Christian business of those who do not tithe. And they'll attack that business. So you need to understand there is warfare in your area of working, whether business, employment, self-employment. You need to know there is warfare in a pambano vikali sana. In a pambano vikali. And you need to be discerning and to know what principles do I use to fight in my business? How are you being fought in the area of business? In your place of employment, in your place of self-employment, even in the place of living. Uliza mwezako na ishingi wapi? Are you discerning? Because some of you have been fought. The sons of the wickers from the area you live, they are doing a lot of witchcraft to fight and neutralize you. And you don't know. Sometimes they they even they'll do some things. The indicators that will show you some things have been done at a kule nyumba. Kule nyumba nunakuta. Something has happened. Me have found funny things that have been uh, have happened. Uh, unakuta ni ndege ya mewa wa mewe kwa hapo ni kichwa ya paka. Ni damu imemuagwa. Uh, uh, sometimes they do witchcraft physically. Awa ni wala walevo ya chini. Ukiwana muto nakuja kuwa kuku na kukata. Iyo ni wale. Waninguvu za shetani lakini ni walevo ya chini. Uh, the higher operators them they don't need to, to use material things. Them they operate level one or two spirits they just access in the spirit in the legal ground they can use to attack you they use lakini hawa wengine wakukuja kumkuweka mafi kwa duka na nini hawa ni wala wachai wa level ya juu na ukiona unatumiwa hao ujue huko kiwango ya chini unatumiwa watu wakukuwekea mafi na nini na kuwa paka umedharauliwa sana na ulimwengu wa roho wanaona huyu acha tumtumia tamafi tu huyu tutazima eh 
Watu wa level ya jua tumwambie mafi unapigano na ulimwengu wa roho heavy warfare. Ukiwa na wewe ni mtu wa kuwekewa mafi ni kucheza unacheza na wakovu you are not serious. You need to be serious. Aliwamba kamchawi ka level ya kukuja kuwa kuku kanaogopa <laughs> kawezi <laughs> kalijaribu kanachome. <laughs> Lakini ya kama ni ula kupigo na uchawi ya manyoya ya kuku na mifupa na maka. We ukulevu ya chindi katika. Because in the realm of the spirit they assess as you get assessed. Eh? They assess and you tunambi be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. And they assess the levels. Nandio nakutanga kitu kimoja natafutanga. They assess your level of spiritual power. And the biggest thing they do to work on you is to bring you to the lowest level of spiritual strength. They call it zero level. Where they know now, who to tanyo rosha tu. And they start to work. Chochote kina kufanya uwe na mguvu katika mungu. Kama ni maombi, unaenda ukizimu wa pole po. Kama ni kusoma neno, unaenda ukizimu wa pole pole. Kama ni kuenda ushirika. Kama ni kukesha na kuomba, unaenda ukiwekio jam kidogo hukuchi. Mambo yale ya nakutia nguvu katika mungu, unaanza kulegea. Na unavyo legea, unazidi kuwa mdhaifu katika mungu katika Mungu. Sasa anajua sasa at the level of weakness huyu tunaweza kuweka chi? Tunaweza kuweka chini. Niulize aliye karibu na sasa ukijiassess katika kuwa nguvu na uwezo wa Mungu kwa wapi? <laughs> Mwambie uko juu ya mlima au katikati ya mlima au uko chini ya mlima. <laughs> uko wapi? to assess, to, to weke hapa, to seme, mlima unasimamia nguvu za mungu. Sasa to assess, na unajua si tunapandanga mlima yuko kilele, yuko katikati, yuko chini. Muulize spiritual ukiji assess kwa keli bila kudanganyana, uko juu ya mlima, katikati ya mlima, au uko uko chini. Self-evaluation is very important. Praise God. It's a very, very, very important. So I'll pray something that is very important is discernment. Praise God. You see, like this is a girl. We read Acts 16. This is a girl. So some people who are used by the devil, we call them unconscious agents. They are not conscious. They are being used by the devil. Some of these are mad people, insane people. People who are not saved, but Satan can use them. Not that necessarily they are devil worshippers. Sometimes, as we've seen in the Bible, even believers being used by the, by the enemy. Shetan ya kuitaji kwenda ambari kwa ushirika yesu, walipata Judas haka ingia. Eh? Hata kabre ya Judas, yalitumia Petro kwanza kujaribu kumzuhia yesu. Eh? To stop Jesus. So, the important thing we need to understand things katika level hile mepata kuingia na kuleto na mungu mahali hapa. Yule mungu wa mewawezesha, hata hapa tawezesha. Lakini kuna sehemu yako. There is your part. God is always faithful. Let each one of us individually and together be faithful in our part. What we are called to do by God. Be true, be faithful. Praise God. Because the battle, the army that God is operating with now, look at Revelation. Hmm? There is a dimension of, of the army of God that we need to live, which is called faithful. Let's go to our Bibles in Revelation. Because the battle we've entered, Recently, somebody had, had spiritual experience in our church, and he was shown in the realm of the spirit. He saw in the heavens, the heavens of Kenya open, and there was a beast. There was a beast over the nation. And this beast was holding, was holding somebody who had a spear. And I told them today, I know that in the year 2024, globally, and in many territories, the spirit that is now, leading in the operations of the kingdom of darkness is the spirit of the Antichrist, the beast. Mbereni alikuwa ni huyu kahaba mku, yendi alikuwa natumika. Lakini zasa chapter yake kumekuwa na mabadiliko in the realm of the spirit, we are dealing with the realm of the spirit. Yendi o commander in charge ya operations zote za ufami wa giza na nguvu zote za giza na wanao fanya kazi na nguvu za giza wanadamu. Na katika vita hivi, nataka nisomo hii scripture moja, itatusaidia. Revelation 17, I want us to look verse 14. We start at verse 12, I want us to look at this warfare. Qualities ya askari katika jeshi la kristo wakati huu. 
Biblia inasema hivi verse 12 The 10 horns you saw are 10 kings who have not yet received a kingdom but who for one hour will receive authority as kings along with the beast I remember sometime telling you sometime back you see in th the world is already structured sai wanafanya final touches katika structures of establishing the one world kingdom then in their final touches many things have been put in place the person who supposed the person who is supposed to manifest eh, as the number is already in the world we are just not very far for his manifestation that person whom this beast will manifest through is already in the world the final preparation and structures are being put in place for the manifestation but we need to understand because like now dividing the world into 10 economic and political zones it was done long time ago in club of rome 1973 things have been working on so we are just in the final touches of the manifestation of the new world order the manifestation of the one world kingdom those things are moving very fast and we are going to experience recently i've been teaching about persecution you see there are trials and temptations and i was dealing now with the dimension of trials of not hardships but persecution mahari utateso kwa sababu ya ye ya yesu and the church must be ready for persecution and the church needs to be taught about persecution and you are going to find especially from now as we move on there will be a lot of persecution from your neighbors from your place of work from your boss kwa sababu ya wokofu kutukano kwa sababu ya wokofu verbal na imeanza kama ija kukuta iko njia verbal harassment just because you are a believer before we move even to physical persecution even being fired so you better get ready and don't compromise that's why you are coming to this conference to be positioned because you are going to face you have been facing temptations and trials the level of trials many of us have been facing is a kukosa pesa magonjwa. Lakini when we reach the level of trials of persecution, where you are now being persecuted, kwa sababu ya yesu, utafutwa kasi, utatukanu, utadharauliwa, majirani, mahari unafanya kasi, all those things, you would better need to study the Bible, the subject of persecution. When you, do you, how do you stand when you are persecuted, when physical persecution comes? Bibi inatuambia katika Ibrania kuhusu vita. Inatuambia tujapigana vita hadi na dhambi hadi kumwaga damu. Kumwaga damu. Bado lakini kuna maeneo katika dunia believers are experiencing persecution. They are being killed. And it's good to get ready because the spirit of antichrist is a persecutor, is a very wicked spirit. Na hapa inatuambia katika Revelation, inatuambia verse 11, 13, they have one purpose and will give their power and authority to the beast. Verse 14, diyo nataka tushike, they'll make war against the Lamb. The Lamb is Christ. So even before the manifestation of the beast, of the spirit of Antichrist in the flesh, persecution is already under the way. And the beast, hmm? Hmm? And the ten horns, his team, they'll make war against the Lamb. That is Christ. Mnaona ile vita imelekea Israeli. Mana mungu na mashahidi wawiri duniani. Israeli na kanisa. Na wamelekeza wa vita kali sana. Na kile kilifanya Israeli pigwe. Ni kama vile kanisa lisipo jichunga. They were not vigilant. They were not holy. Wakavamiwa. And God wants the church to be sober and vigilant. What was Israel Israel with all its intelligence na mambo yake? How could they be attacked? How could that happen? Because they were not vigilant. My friend, be sober and vigilant. Yeah. Them they are facing a war coming from the spirit and it is so physical. It has been very ruthless. I want you to understand that they will make war against the lamb and the lamb will overcome them because the law he is the Lord of Lords and King of Kings. They cannot overcome Jesus Christ. The beast, the kingdom of darkness, they cannot overcome the lamp. Jemedari wetu siwa kushindwa na hata shindwa. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Lakini tunazidi kwambio kanuni nataka weke ndani yako. And with him will be his called, sema called, chosen, and faithful followers. 
faithful. Hii ngini yote tume qualify. Mana ukisoma katika Biblia, Mungu alitujua na akatuchagua kabla ya misingi ya ulimwengu. Lakini the final item that is mentioned there, who the irejeshi ya Yesu, and with him will be his called, chosen, and faithful followers. Faithfulness will be required at each one of us. Yes, we are called. Yes, we are chosen. But now, there is a dimension of faithfulness. In every area of our lives to the Lord, in our families, in the church, in all that we are called to do, because the Lord, that's the army the Lord will function with. People who are called, chosen, and thirdly, they are faithful. They will not be defeated. The battle there will be fought, but hatuta shindo na jemedari wetu. Bwana yosa sefiwe. Shema yesu na kushukuru, kwa kuniokoa, na kunifanya askari, katika jeshi lako, ukiwa jemedari, na minikiwa askari wako, nisaidie bwana, nikiwa askari yako, ulie mchagua, ulie muita, nijalie, na unisaidie, kuwa muaminifu, to be faithful, in every area of my life. Na atuta shindwa. Bwanao sasefiwe. So you see a lot of manifestation of the working of the spirit of Antichrist. Atuna nafasi ya kuguza. Lakini conference hii is an awakening conference. Maana kama vile tuliona 2023. Bada 2022 kanisa lililala. We have not prayed as we ought to. The praise of prayer and intercession has been down. Many things have been done. You cannot compare the church of Kenya in 2022 and 2023. And the Lord, katika Because ahead is not easy. Na watu waliolala hawata tobo. That's why this conference is here, is to bring an awakening. An awakening that will cause people to reposition, to be repositioned in their rightful place. And do what God wants them to call them in this season and this time. In the mighty name of Jesus. Stand on your feet. I want to pray this prayer together with you in the mighty name of Jesus. I want to pray this prayer. Just lift your hands before the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Say, Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, thank you for saving me, for making your, me your son, and your daughter, thank you for making me a co-heir with Jesus Christ in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you for calling me to be a co-worker with you in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray in the mighty name of Jesus that in this awakening conference, Heavenly Father, you may help me by your Holy Spirit in the mighty name of Jesus to be repositioned to my function in your body in the mighty name of Jesus forgive me Lord where Lord I've fallen from my place of responsibility forgive me Lord individually and co corporately forgive us Lord where we have fallen from our place of responsibility and fail to function as we are supposed to function individually and corporately as your church Forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness by your blood in the mighty name of Jesus. Make us clean in the mighty name of Jesus. And today in the mighty name of Jesus, I take the authority that you have granted us through your son Jesus Christ against the kingdom of darkness. Today I break every witchcraft and every sorcery that has been done against me in the mighty name of Jesus and together as a Jesus as the church of Jesus Christ we destroy every sorcery every witchcraft every curse every spell that has been placed upon us to hinder us to limit us and even to destroy us in the mighty name of Jesus and right now every demonic spirit that has been given assignment in my life, in my family, in my workplace, in ministry, to stop us, to hinder us, 
in the name of Jesus, we bind you right now. In the mighty name of Jesus, we command you, depart from us. Depart from our marriages. Depart from our families. Depart from our places of work. In the mighty name of Jesus, depart from this place of ministry. In the mighty name of Jesus, see every witchcraft, every sorcery, every curse, every spell carried out against us by the kingdom of darkness be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. And every wicked spirit released on assignment against us be cast out, live and go in the mighty name of Jesus. See every spirit of weakness, every spirit of infirmity, sickness and disease, spirits of strife, strip for conflict, spirits of misunderstanding and division, spirits of divorce, be gone from our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Say, you spirit of divorce, be gone from my marriage. You know, break it in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of rebellion released in my children, be gone in the mighty name of Jesus. Every spirit released to close down my business. Depart from my place of work in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Just lift your hands in the name of the Lord. We give you praise, Lord. We pray today together by faith. We say, Ebenezer, thank you for the fire you've brought us. In the mighty name of Jesus. You've gathered us in this place to awaken us, Lord. For the enemy with his trickery and wars had brought many into a place of slumber, Lord. Into a place of weakness. In a place of not functioning as we are supposed to do. And today, Father, we arise in the authority that you've given us in the name of your son, Jesus. And by that authority in the name of Jesus, we destroy every sorcery, every witchcraft, every curse, every spell, every incantation that the enemy has carried out against us to hinder us, to frustrate us, and to hinder us. We break that sorcery. We break that witchcraft. We break every curse. We break every spell. Kwa maisha yetu, kwa ndoa zetu, kwa familia zetu, kwa mahali petu pa kazi, kwa mahali petu pa kuishi, kwa mahali pa huduma, katika jila yesu. And we command every evil spirit on assignment against us, be gone, depart, go, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, say lose our husbands, lose our wives, lose our youth, Lose our children. Depart from our marriages. Depart from our families. Depart from church. Go. Depart from our place of work. In the mighty name of Jesus. Just lift your hands right now. We worship you, Jesus. There are people here. Spirit of infirmity was placed on you. A spirit that brings sickness and disease to weaken you in serving God and doing what you are supposed to do. Right now, that spirit breaks from you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you have been weakling, you have been sickly, you wonder what the problem is. If you are here, can you come very fast as the Lord breaks that force from you. In the mighty name of Jesus, you've been sick. You wonder what the problem is. You've tried every medication, everything. You don't know it was a witchcraft attack. Something was preached on you. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. There is somebody you are being thrown away. Unambi utoke mahali pakashi. Nasima penzi ya mungu. It is witchcraft that has been done against your place. Na yule ambaya ame kukomboesha, ame inuka, ataki kukuona, uko api, uko api ukuche. Na ameleta kisirani, 
Wanataka kuongeza hata rent and it is not the will of God is attack in your place of business. You wonder what is going on in the mighty name of Jesus. Customers hawakuti, watu hawanunui, something has been done in the mighty name of Jesus. It is broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Imefika mahali umeshindwa nini mbaya na mzee nini na mke wako nini mbaya na vijana watoto wako a tax has been released spirits have been assigned to frustrate us to harass us that you may not be able to function because when we are in such a state we are unable to function in the mighty name of Jesus. Just lift your hands as the anointing of the Lord comes upon you. It breaks that witchcraft. The witchcraft that have been carried out, the sorcery, the curse, the spells that have been placed upon you. In your health, it breaks now. Unafunguliwa na mungu sasa. Unarejeshua afia yako. Katika jina la yesu. Ndiyo hao watu walio teso na marathi. Your spirit in Aondoka. It was a spirit of infirmity. It departs you from now. Yes. Belus. Yes. In Jesus' name. Kuna watu wanachiruwa haraka sana. You are being released. The spirit of infirmity. Magonjo yeleweki. Madaa unasumbuka. You've been neutralized. Hata kuomba. Vida unafanyanga. Hata sengine kanisa hukuchi. Lakini sahi. The spirit of infirmity is broken from you. And every spirit. The spirit of infirmity is a principality. Inakujanga na maroho wengine ya magonjwa. To attack you. Now you are being released. You are being released. You are being released. You are being released. Right now. Those contrary spirits are getting out from your body. You are being released. In the mighty name of Jesus. To darkness, leave the people of God. Talk our chili haraka, karika jina yeso. In the mighty name of Jesus, spirits carrying depression and stress and oppression, many have been weakened. In the mighty name of Jesus, those things have been broken from you. In the mighty name of Jesus, una chili wasasa. Walo me shamrua mahali pakazi. Kile ataki mevonjika katika jina wa Yesu. Utashindo tena kwa nini mwenye nyumba ametulia. Aa hakuwa niyewe. Kuna watu wakutaki pale. Kuna watu wenye wivu walitenda choto wanaweza. Upandishiwe renta. Ufukuzwe pale kazi. Kazi mekua chini. Customers have not been coming. The car work is down. Finances are down. But today the sorcery, the witchcraft, and the curses, and the spells, and the incantations that to are done are broken in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Receive your release right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. The release is coming upon the people of God. Receive your release. Pokea kufunguliwa. Hota kauki hangaika. Karika jila yesu. Be released in the name of Jesus. Be released in the mighty name of Jesus. Spirit of torment. Go. You tormentor. Leave her. Tormentor. You are a tormenting spirit. Get out of her. You are a tormenting spirit. You will not torment her anymore. Get out. In the mighty name of Jesus. In They have been tormenting you. The torment in the mighty name of Jesus. They said they will torment you. They will harass you. But they are liars. The brokenness is happening. You are released. That torment is gone. In the mighty name of Jesus. Loosed in the mighty name of Jesus. Be loosed in the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. The people of God will live and function as God wants them to function. In the mighty name of Jesus. Rakata eleleba. Walitaka kuondosha katika za muzenyu. Katika nyumba ya mungu. Katika maombezi. In the mighty name of Jesus. You are loosed. You are free. Go. The darkness leads you. Toka unachilewa. Karikajila yesu. You are loosed by the power of God. You are loosed by the power of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus. Be loosed. Be released by the anointing of God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Watu wa mungu munachilewa. Karikajila yesu. Onafunguliwa. Karikajila yesu. In the mighty name of Jesus. Karikajila yesu. Be released by the anointing of God. Be released. In the mighty name of Jesus. Achiliwa. Katika jina la yes. In Jesus name. Be released. Be released ma'am. By the anointing of God. Katika jina la yes. You are being released. Achiliwa. Achiliwa. 
wamekudhofisha usiishi maisha usitumikie Mungu katika jina la Yesu ukasikia kuchoka ya yeah, you are being released in the mighty name of Jesus this is an awakening conference and power that has been released to approach you that you may not arise and do what God has called you to do you are being released in the mighty name of Jesus 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 receive your freedom receive your freedom be who God called you to be function this day in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus you are released in the mighty name of Jesus you are released you are released by the anointing of God. Unachilua karika jina yes. Yo sauti ni nasikia kiongea kwa mbali walisema katakufa. Death liver. Ukufi. You serve God. You will not die. Their decrees are annulled in Jesus name. I decree you shall live and not die. You are free in Jesus name. In Jesus name. Be released. Be released in the mighty name of Jesus. There is something what do you do for work? Business. Yeah. Something has been attacked about your workplace, but the Lord breaks it now. The Lord breaks it. The Lord resists your premises. The Lord releases your customers, your finances, the favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Walikuwa wamekupea miezi tatu hiyo kazi hutafanya tena, lakini you shall do it as the Lord has called you to do it. You are being released now in the mighty name of Jesus. That decree, that decree that they have made, even as today we are being led by Esther 9 verse 1, a decree has been made over her business, but today we write another decree by the blood of Jesus and we pray that you may prosper, you succeed, that business will not be closed, you are moving on to higher levels in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus receive the mercies of God upon your life, in the mighty name of Jesus, the hand of the Lord be upon you, the hand of the Lord be upon you, be released in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus can you say we know because there's somebody the Lord wants to attend to it is a very interesting case by the Lord just lift your hands wherever you are before the Lord the Lord will attend to that person in the mighty name of Jesus just lift your hands wherever you are the Lord will attend to that case mightily in the mighty name of Jesus. Rata kapu kataya lelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelelel
in the mighty name of Jesus. It breaks. You are released from that domination and manipulation that person had over you. It is broken. And you are released to have your sound mind, to be yourself again, to be sober. In Jesus' name, you are released. To pigia isu makofi mazuri. Unaweza kuketi. Taka nirudishe mkutano. Naombia wengi wenyu to be very discerning of people. No suspicious discerning. Unaweza kukata hapo. Hii niseme ni kimalizia kwa mdomo. Pray for her. Nikaingizo katika ulimwengu wake wa roho. Nikaona somebody in her life. So close. Yani ni kama memfanya endi oxygen yake. That was manipulating. Because she's a wealthy lady, she was being manipulated, dominated so much. And I prayed for her. I don't know who this person I'm seeing in your life. Dominating. You can't, it's as if you cannot live without her. Ni kama mekua kama mungu in your life. But I command today, I break that manipulation and domination. In the covenant, I'm a kuingiza, na mamboya ke ni mevunja, na ni miamrisa chochote ametumika na adui kukuiba na kukupora. Arudeshe katika jina la Yesu. Na ni kwa ni me travel kutoka Samburu, ni kakuja mahali Kenya hii. Ikifika jioni, ya kani tumia message. Uyure dad. Akani ambia merudishua proti mbirizake na title deed. Unajua kuna watu wana manipulate watu Una manipulate Siku toa ya mungu ni kujitoa Una tolewa Siku tolewa kwa mungu It was a mother That si simu walipika si tuliomba maompi Na nika muombea And I command Chochote amekuibia Nyota yako hati manakia Urejeshewe Hata tujamaliza safari kufika samburu jioni Ndiyo hii meseji yake Haka semba yule ni meelewa ni nani ulikuwa na niambia Kambia sawe unajua Lakini hamepika simu ya meniambia niende di kachikue proti zangu Na title deed zake hamenirudishi So I pray today any of you because I know us You have been taken advantage of Si watu wate ni watu wa mungu Hii mambu ya kupenda kuombaombeo na kuingia kila mahali na kupewa tu vitu wachanini Wanaeswa sefiri you get manipulated. Alikuwa dominated and manipulated. That you don't even think for yourself. Uyo ndi wanafikiria kwa niyabaya. You are not thinking. Na unaakiri yako. Ambia mwenzako ulipewa akiri ya kufikiria. Uziwate mutu wafikiri yange kwa niyabaya yako. That is which. Iyo si huduma. Ukikuta kanisa. Watu pata ndi wanafikiria kwa niyabaya. Uyo ni uchawi si kanisa. You have a brain. You are given to think. Siku kontroliwa hivi kama dingo ingo imefungwa na kakamba, unapele kwa hivi. Ukiambio chochote, you do anything. Crazy. And even to this day, you live in fear. <laughs> you live in fear of particular individuals. Today, that domination and manipulation is broken. If you are initiated in any covenant, any evil contract by those people, today we broke those evil covenants. We break those evil contracts. We are released today in the mighty name of Jesus to serve God, not to be a slave of anybody, but to serve the living God. Be released on your finances. Be released with everything that you have and that you do in the mighty name of Jesus. They spoke to you, you go. Your business will go down. It is arising now. 
praise God. Because some of you are being harassed by those dimensions or people who dominated and manipulated you. Now you are moving ahead and God has brought you to a place but there are forces fighting you, pulling back. Even you are afraid, you are so scared. You want just to go and leave the, the woman of God and the man of God without saying because of fear. Salimia mwezo kambia wapito tusimu na pigi yangu. Unauliza angu lienda wapi? Unajua vile tutukubaliana? Today we break that fear. We break that domination. We break that no, no control. And today we declare you are set free from the oppression of men. There is something we call the oppression of men, not of demons. David prayed in Psalms 19, Psalms 1 time, he said, set me free from the oppression of men. So I pray for you today. Any human being oppressing you that you cannot be whom you are called to be. You cannot have what you are supposed to have and do what you are supposed to do and that you cannot serve God because of somebody oppressing you. I command that oppression be broken. The fear, the intimidation, the worry that comes with that human oppression barely lives today. Arise in the Lord, no longer be enslaved by men. You are a servant of the living God. Be released. Be free. In the name of Jesus. Don't be afraid of those people. Whatever they did to you, God is greater than them. Today, by faith, even those online, you are living in fear. You know you are in the long hands. You are in the long press. You have been tormented by somebody so and so who is claiming to be a man of God, a servant of God. And he has threatened you if you go. If you don't, you will die. You will suffer. The devil is a liar. Hear the voice of the Lord today. In the mighty name of Jesus, you are released from that captivity. Go to the place where God has called you to go. Go be in the ministries that God has called you to be. You are released today in the mighty name of Jesus to serve the living God. Your spirit is released. Your soul is released. Your body, your mind, your heart, your business, your finances are released from that evil captivity in the mighty name of Jesus. And we call to you to Mount Zion, to the Mount of the Living God, to serve the true God. From this day, in Jesus' name, it is done. Amen. Hallelujah. Can we appreciate God for... Praise the Lord. Can we appreciate Jesus again, again, again? Wow. Glory to Jesus. Something is going on. Something is happening. Hallelujah. Can we appreciate Jesus? So oh, yes, even for Bishop. Hallelujah. Are you not blessed? We give God all the glory. He is so awesome. He has done awesome things. He has been faithful to us. And even today, he has spoken to us. And the foundation is already set. Praise the Lord. I'm so glad, Bishop, you are very welcome. And now you came from, I was not here. But I thank God for uh, Pastor Yuri has taken good care. As you said, amen. And all of you, praise God. And so, this is so wonderful. This is a great beginning. And uh, the foundation is very important because we need to fight what we know. We need to fight from a point of knowledge. And what the Lord was using Bishop to tell us is that this is the time that we need to know what is going on. I'm telling you, I am totally agreeing because we didn't tell him what to preach about or anything much. But the Lord, of course, spoke to us, spoke to me this month, this season, that it is a season to turn the battles. We have an opportunity. I'm telling you, seasons have their graces. This season, God is saying, is of turning battles. The reason for turning battles is because there are many battles planned. There are very dangerous things planned against the church, against individual Christians, and against 
against the nation of Kenya, which is, as, the, as Bishop said, it, you all know, we have said it again and again, it's an inheritance for the children of God, for the saints in the land. Kenya is an inheritance. That's why the fight is severe. Kenya does not, as I told you, it doesn't belong to a government. It belongs to the children of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's why we take personal responsibilities. Amen. That's why even if anything wants to discourage us, we don't get discouraged because we know who the true owners of Kenya are. And you are seated here. Hallelujah. So God is speaking about uh, turning battles. Battles. It is an opportunity of turnarounds for us. As the Lord has spoken, you've heard, even Israel, these are seasons of a lot of war. Seasons of a lot of war. Since last year, you've seen what was going on with Israel and the body of Christ. There has been extreme war, spiritual, and even it is almost getting physical. So we need to stand. We need to get prepared. And we need to bring down these battles. God spoke to me and said we must turn these battles at these gates. Otherwise, we will struggle through the year. Too much. Too much. Okay? That's why at this conference we are saying we are turning battles. And you have been taught how to do it. And the Lord has said, first of all, you need to be prepared. And that's what Bishop has been speaking to us. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. We must guard ourselves and we must do what the Lord wants us to do. Are we blessed today? Bwana Yesu asifiwe. And also remember today is the last day. In fact, you have just some few minutes. Some of you have been going to 6, 6, 6, 6, uh, I mean, 6 p.m. in your fasting. Others have been doing 24 hours. Whichever the person, today is the last day of the 40. Are we not glad? Is the grace not sufficient? Has it not been sufficient? Now, the challenge, what, what Bishop was cautioning us about is that we may reach this 40 now and say, Oh, hallelujah, mambo ya maombi imeisha. Sasa ni kukula na kustarehe, apana. You are very wrong. You are very wrong. In fact, the 40 days was just to help us awake. I'm not saying we'll do more, more prayer and fasting, but I'm saying we must stay in high alertness, spiritually. And in an attitude of a high level of prayer. So we must turn battles. Interestingly, you know, Bishop, the same thing you said is what the Lord quickened me about. He told me this meeting is also again preparing. At another level, spiritual level, is preparing the way and the ground for the arrival toward the visitation of Benihin. I kept wondering, God, last time you said it's also preparing a way. Because God is determined to do something very powerful in this nation. Hey, the devil likes it or not, God is turning around battles. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So when I heard Bishop say it, I said, Lord, you've been telling me of late that this meeting, we take it very seriously because... You know, the way uh, John the Baptist, he was making a way. Hallelujah. And the Lord said, now again, for this one, this conference is coming at this time. Because it has also a major purpose of making sure the path is cleared again. It is spiritual. You may wonder, what has it to do? How do we do it? No, it is a spiritual thing going, going on. And we only obeyed. And as we have obeyed, the Lord... Oh, the Lord is faithful. And the Lord is at work. That's why we are encouraged even today. Praise God. So, um, uh, we are going to, as we are ending our prayer and fasting, I don't want to uh, stay longer. But, we need to understand that this season, we need to, to make sure that we are we are connected and we stay connected to God. Uh, we are going to prepare ourselves to uh, give in a short while.
But even as we prepare ourselves and the ushers are going to wait on us for a time of giving in this second session, we also want our hearts to be ready to conclude this in a good way, in a holy communion. Hallelujah. Holy communion is a very powerful thing. Powerful. Jesus himself gave us example where he made sure that we took holy communion and uh, he said do this in remembrance of me and he also said this is my covenant. It's good to seal a season like this by just taking holy communion and uh, you know we are not to take the holy communion in a, in a, in a in a way that is not worthy. Praise the Lord. So I'm, I'm, I'm wondering because there are, there are maybe some of us who after this first session we would want to, to we have already gone into the, uh, the, the, the time for the second session. Uh, we would want to go. So I was requesting if it is possible that uh, we give ourselves a few more minutes and um, take the Holy Communion together. Is that good? Hello? But if you are in so much hurry, because of course our, first se our second session was over, but you see the Lord has led us and now we are already into the, 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 the last session of this day. So as we prepare ourselves to give well and bring our offering and our sacrifices to the altar today, as we have been told that part of warfare that the church needs to learn is in giving, in giving. We bring, uh, we also need to remember that the season of prayer and fasting, we were not meant to keep things for ourselves. Hello? It is good to end every prayer and fasting with a sacrifice. Amma? Does it mean that the 40 days, all the lunches and all this we skipped, it's just to make you care. It was not a saving scheme because it is January. In fact, January is very abundant for us. Don't have that mentality. In fact, people write it in January. In January. No, we are not, we don't usually have hunger in January. Do you know that? We are abundantly prover. So we didn't go because there's no, nothing in the fridge, but we went because we were humbling ourselves. So what we have not been using, it's good to bring a sacrifice at the end of a season of prayer and fasting. Hallelujah. Praise God. Then as we package that, um, Let's package our giving. Okay, those of us who are online, the numbers are there, and uh, it is a time for us to lay our sacrifice on the altar, and uh, then we can know the next thing. Praise the Lord. Ribo sakataya rabasiya rabakor rabasiya rabakonkoro soto rabosaya. As we do that, I appreciate every one of us. I can see some uh, some ministers have come from far. Us. Sister pastors come from Nyeri. Good to see you in the house of the Lord and the several servants of God. Probably I may not mention everyone, but I know you're here and the Lord has allowed you to be in this service at such a time as this. 
I thank God. I also came from somewhere today, Bwana Yesu Masifiwe. I traveled, and by the grace of God, I'm here, so I give thanks to God also. Because of one, because of a reason. Praise the Lord. Those of us who know our sister Cynthia also, let's support her. Praise God. Yeah, they had a, that uh, uh, function today. And uh, let's, con let's support the family in prayer and also in uh, our support. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, as we, we don't want to cut this floor so much. I know we should have taken a break some time back. But it is good because the Lord is ministering to us. Praise God. Pastor Lydia Karibu, you are not late. In fact, you are very much in time for the service you came for. But we are just ending the, the second service. Are we ready with our giving? What we are going to do is that I'm told that some people may want to go to help themselves and all this. But I want to give us maybe just liberty to do it. But um, uh, let's, 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 stay, let's make it like almost continuous now that our time is not much so that we can also end this second, this third service, Abitalia. Is that good? Yeah, I'm told that uh, a small break would be good for people to breathe. Amen. But we will take the Holy Communion. We are going to end this season well. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, uh, uh, the, the word that the Bishop brought is very powerful. The, the reason is, I don't know, you, you, there has been a lot of warfare in the spiritual realm a lot of raging and uh, and the enemy has had really purpose to weaken so many and really we need the spiritual renewal you know the reason as to why we are coming together is for awakening and to be also personally revived as much as we are praying for the nation so renewal of our inner man renewal you know, with might, by might. That's the scripture when I came, we were dwelling on, you know, being strengthened by God's might. Might has all to do with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You know, you can be so strengthened. Mpaka unashindwa kulala. Unaomba, 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 unasema rom takatifu nataka kulala, lakini ya uwezi hacha kuomba. Have you ever seen such a thing? It can happen in Jesus' name. We need that because this season we must be so strong to turn every battle. Ata zile za zamani zinafa kuisha sasa. Hallelujah. Bwana Yesu asifiwe. Can we pray for the offerings now? Those online and those are here. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we appreciate you for every giving. Sanctify every seed. Sanctify every sacrifice. Thank you for your mercy and forgiveness where we've not been faithful. We pray that in Jesus' name you will align us, align our finances where the devourer has been on the case of any person, Lord. Let the devourer be rebuked and let the mercies of God be restored to us. We surrender and ask you, Lord, for blessings, breakthrough, increase in the area of finances. How we thank you and we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. Amen. You can be giving as you give. Uh, I want us to take a, a very short, maybe, if you don't need to go out, you don't need to. Because it's already six and I wanted us to seal this season of prayer and fasting. Um, maybe we can talk of going just to, to help yourself.